Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Watch Report. This is a supposed to be a quarterly roundup of the best watch releases of the year and all of this stuff. This is how it normally goes, at least. But we had a bit of a surprise unveiling over the course of this past week, which was um, Geneva Watch Days. This happened last year as well, but I don't think the show existed back then. So uh, we now have something worth talking about. And I don't know how long the show is going to be. It's going to be quite a quick one, I think, realistically speaking, when you look at the whole, you know, what we normally do for our plus shows. But the nice thing is, is that it's condensed enough that we can enjoy certain pieces. There were like 20 releases or so. And get into the conversation, see what your what your ideas are, what you think about the pieces as well. Enjoy the community discussion and all of that. So let me get into the chat quick. I see Underachieving Watch Collective. Welcome, Thomas, Hans, and BDev, and Scott, and Corvette Man. So, ladies and gents, I uh, made a bit of a blunder this week with my um, uh, community post for the show. I only put it up about half an hour ago. So... Forgive me if you have missed the <laughs> the announcement for the show. Normally, I, I try and like get multi-layered outreach for everyone to see if they can uh, grab the shows, but that doesn't always happen. Anyway, so it's going to be a simple one. Uh, we have on the left-hand side a series of watches, and the right-hand side, we're going to look at articles around them. We're going to look at some more specifics, prices, and all of that. The nice thing about these shows is that they are condensed enough that you can see the pieces all in one go instead of having to look in different places for separate pieces. That's the whole aim of the exercise, at least. So just uh, give me some time to warm up, get my brain into the show, <laughs> get the coffee in the system and all of that, and we can get started. Um, watch beginner, Alan. <laughs> yeah, a short show. There is no knowing. I mean, what is a short show in this, in this side? Do we th think like two hours, two and a half hours? Who knows? Um, again, there are only 20 pieces. And the nice thing about it is that there are pieces that we don't often assign. We don't really we don't talk about very often altogether. So the beauty is that we get to look at some more outreaching, outlandish designs for a change, discuss alternative brands, and just expand from there. Can you let me know if you can hear me in the chat? It's a good way to start. Uh, Rob, I see you joining. Welcome. And Scott, but this crew, it's it's never short. <laughs> we like to talk. I know, I know. That is, uh, it's a positive and a negative. Uh, there's always something good in the discussion. And by all means, ask me a question along the way. Tag me in the chat. We can definitely look up other pieces. If you'd like to ask questions to the audience, that's the best part, actually. When we get this communal feedback on if you're looking for a GMT or a chronograph and recommend recommendations and expectations and stuff. Uh, thank you. You can hear me in the chat. I see Maynard. Haven't seen you for a while, Maynard. Thank you for joining in. And Hans says, all clear. Thanks, everyone, for the, for the ones. And Burbinghard, Mooseman, 10 out of 10, fantastic. Rocket sailing. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So just a quick uh, summary of the show. I really like how, just, just like a, a breakdown of what the show is on the side of the screen. Uh, if you want to look in the description, just a little bit further down, you'll see a link to the event and a brief description of what the show is about. But I really like the idea of how, you know, Basel World has disappeared. <laughs> Uh, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Pretty sad that an event like over 100 years old has had to close up shop, but that's what happens when you're greedy. Nevertheless, brands coming together to host their own events, I think is so much more you know, engaging and exciting because we get to see a short selection. Instead of 100 watches, we get a handful. From there, we can understand what brands are doing a bit more. So right-hand side of the screen, they just break down how this experience came to be. Because of Geneva Watch Days last year, they were able to push this one, and it was very successful, which is nice. Taking the hit from water again. Coffee has a wonderful way of drying out the mouth. Thomas Burnett. Hi there, sir. Coming through loud and clear. That's great. That is great. Um, so Rob's saying, anyone got inside knowledge on upcoming Pelagos release? Oh, God. Don't remind me. Shall we, we address that first, like before the show even starts? Um, yeah, the, the prediction, <laughs> the communal plan. I mean, let me try and pull something up quickly. Um, I could just uh, I could just type in Tudor MN and we'll probably get that as a first <laughs> result. So what happened was um, a couple of months back, we were discussing on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, we were discussing the inevitable release that we would be seeing a Marine National collaboration from Tudor. And the, the word... And the pipeline was that it was going to be launched 1st of September. 
Guess what didn't happen 1st of September? What we actually got was a 32 millimeter Black Bay, not a Marine National Snowflake, none of that. So <laughs> the elephant in the room. So we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. And it really is a kick, kick in the groin for me because I'm here. I'm thinking I'm so excited that this could happen. And it ended up just not not being a thing so yeah that was that was the elephant in the room i think we were all expecting september 1st release and nothing happened at the end of the day all we can do is wait and hope and you never know maybe we will see something along the line uh oh, it just sucks it just sucks okay taylor taylor that's a pleasure thank you another thing everyone thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be a part of the show and for just listening in put this on a big screen somewhere have this on in the background and just let me talk you to sleep, basically. Um, Junior Johnson, welcome. It's good to see you here. It's been a long time. And Amsterdam, welcome. So basically a handful of brands. I can sum up the brands for you very quickly. Uh, Bulgari, Breitling, Debitun, General Genta, Gerard Perigo, Grubel Forsi, H. Moser, MBNF, Ulysse Nardan, and Urwerk. They banded together to come up with this concept of Geneva Watch Days as a show, this, this continual big group unveiling. And then from there, you had more brands reaching in like Grubel Forsey, Gerard Perigo, um, and others that became a part of the deal. Uh, Frederick Constant and C, uh, oh, Chapek, of course, Doxa. So that's going to be the handful of brands we're going to look at. And yeah, just enjoy the chat. The page isn't the easiest to navigate, but you get a, a rough idea of how everything was set up. These were the founding partners, the ones in the middle here. And it also takes you to all the pages. Again, click on the link in the description if you want to have a look at their separate brand pages. And then some more brands here at the base, Doxa, Oris, and all of them. But okay, let's get into the beginning of the show, I think, before we <laughs> prattle on for far too long. Um, I see Blue Shirt joining in. Welcome, Blue Shirt. It's great having you here. So again, I hope you're putting your feet up taking care of yourself over this weekend. And for everyone in the States who've been dealing with uh, the hurricane going on and everything, um, really hope you're looking after yourselves. It's been crazy news. I mean, you would expect it to be happening on this side of the world in England because <laughs> we haven't had a summer. But uh, yeah, again, take care of yourselves, everyone out there. Um, I see Zen Master and Megan, welcome for joining. Uh, Julian, Pleasure having you all here. Again, this is not wrist shot week. This is a bit more of a sit down and casual banter and relax. So let's see what happens. A lot of these watches have been discussed already, as, as most of us probably know. There have been uh, reviews and, and bits and pieces going on over the course of this week. Some great articles written. I'm using monochrome for a lot of these because their photography is just fantastic. They give you a nice description of the, the background to these pieces too. So we're starting now with the Mickey Mouse, what do they call it? The Mickey Mouse Retrograde. It's a recreation of a classic piece, and it's a bit of fun. The only downside is the price is hefty. The price for this watch is like 13 grand, 14. We'll get to that eventually. But here's some examples of the originals, which, you know, either love them or hate them. I mean, Gerald Genta's had some very interesting uh, hour, jump hour pieces in the past, which I'm sure will be highlighted in the article. Here's some examples of the originals that were shared. And do they have some of the, no, they don't. The original Gerald Genta pieces were fascinating, very modern looking. And here we have something that is a bit of fun. I must say, I like how it is functional fun. It doesn't have this, you know, uh, what do we call it? Overly playful and difficult to read aesthetic. It's actually very easy to use and function. I think the placement of where the hour is next to the minutes is great. And end result is pretty legible. Another thing that I saw, just some background behind the scenes information are the sketches that went into the, the final illustration of the Mickey Mouse face and everything. And it's always a joy to see that. It's almost like Disney cartoon that's actually put it together, which is amazing. Um, but again, the, I always thought this was in white gold, but it's in fact in steel. So that's a yeah, limited edition of 150 pieces. That's also a bit of a mouthful. But hey, a bit of fun. I thought <laughs> it would be a good way to start the show. There is no um, consistency with the selection. What I've done is I have pretty much jambled, jambled them together. Is that the word? Used a randomizer and just thrown in uh, the, the selection of 20 pieces. So we're going to see some good stuff, some interesting stuff, some stuff we can question as well as the Ratrapunt and all the cool stuff we want to talk about too. So Megan says, taking an evening run. So I'll be listening. Oh, geez. You're doing this again. I'm going to put you to sleep. I tell you, one of these days, you're going to be snoring on the run and you're going to fall and hit your head or something. So please be careful out there, Megan. 
<laughs> thank you for joining in um i really hope you enjoy your run out there i mean it's the perfect time 11 o'clock that side of the world so let's see burbinghard says part of me is glad some of the big brands like rolex aren't there a successful trade show without big boys is a great exactly you know what i wanted to mention this at the very beginning of the discussion i don't know if there's anything else i could share on top of this um what i love so much about the show it slipped my mind here are the specifications of the Genta watch, if you're interested, is that it's bringing attention to brands that we never we never often talk about, never look at. Chapek and uh, Grupal Forsey and um, Gerard Perigo and those names. You're getting to see them in the lim limelight for a change. They're not being overshadowed by all the big brands, which is such fun. Craft and tailored. Cam, welcome. That is so good having you here, man. I hope you're well. Uh, I got your message and I haven't replied to it. I am absolutely useless with phones. I'm going to reach out to you again. We're going to have a call very soon, but it's so good having you here, man. I hope you enjoy the discussion, whatever this is going to be. You know, just come in for the watches and stay for the banter because the community chat is always, always a laugh. Andrew Chimi says, I'd rather wear a Mickey than a Richard Meal. You know what? These watches do have such a nice, uh, what was that um, talking watches episode, her dinky episode? Uh, guy's name is on the tip of my tongue, but it's that whole idea of the watch is not to take yourself seriously. That's the beauty of the, the presentation. And I think it's special. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, what's the price of this watch? I didn't see. Oh, 16 and a half for this piece, which is hectic. Um, it does use a Bulliver based movement, if I remember right. I think that's what happened. Yes. So Gerald Gentle was acquired by Bulliver back in the day. I think that's the story. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so good having you here, Cam. Really, really. Um, I know how it goes. Talk soon. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'll send a message out next week. I think I'm going to take a break from YouTube for a week, and I will reach out to you, and we can make it happen. Uh, again, the rest of you joining in, thanks so much for being a part of the show. We're going to move on next. I think the Mickey Mouse watch was a good way to break the ice and get started. This brand I have never seen before. Let me try and get the name right. It's, it's Charles G Girardier. Is a young independent brand created in 2018. So this is brand spanking new and also something worth pointing out. So this is called the 1809 Cobalt Blue. 1809. So we're trying to like, you know, call back to those past very old school examples. And I think one of the big call signs that he's managed to do here is you can see on both ends of the screen, incorporated his name as a signature at the top of the watch. Let me know what you think of that as an answer. Reach and touch someone you love, Hans. That's beautiful. Uh, and I see BMW M3 saying, I've had my eye on Damasco DC86 for some time now. Anyone have any experience with Damasco line? It looks stellar. Uh, Damasco is similarly linked to Zinn as a brand. It is a German brand, if I'm correct. Yeah, just remember, I'm st I haven't looked at watches all day today, so... So I'm going to take some time to get my brain juices going and get the alcohol in the system. Uh, really wanted his name out there. Yeah, I mean, look, you can tell, take this from anyone creative that when it comes to trying to be unique and bring a unique idea out there, it's difficult to do it, especially in such a highly saturated market that is watches. So what a beautiful movement. How is that for a strength? Self-winding caliber, so you can't actually see the rotor. Um, Geneva-based ma movement maker, timeless, displays hours, minutes, seconds, flying to or beyond pulsating at the six. That's pretty amazing. Nice arrangement. And if we zoom right in on the dial, you can see that the machining, the actual finishing on the dial, I don't know what you would call that, some kind of tapisserie. So the question is, do you, we like the idea of a signature at the center of the dial? It's a little bit heavy-handed, uh, but you know, to each their own. You know, the tourbillon is the thing that takes up the most amount of space. In, in that case, why have the logo at the at the 3 o'clock as well as at the 12? That's the question. Either love it or hate it. Taking a hit from some water because the dry throat is real today. Zen Master, Damasco are great, but super tough. Tend to be on the large side, but the aesthetic can be polarizing. Yep, but if you love it, then go for it. Yeah, it's interesting. Hey? Brands, jumping into certain watch brands and, and finding the one you like, I think is a is a special scenario when you can actually you know focus in on the brand and know what you want from the brand and then move on from there. It's always good fun. Some tech specs on this watch: forty one mil diameter, twelve mil height, eighteen karat white gold sapphire crystal with air. Okay, Grand Faux enamel, white gold base engraved chevron motif. Okay, that's pretty special. 
Pretty, pretty special. Nice arrangement. It's for 90,000 euros, though, so it's not the easiest. Does the logo act as the running seconds? You know what? If that is the case, you know, you could be 100% right because there is opinion in the center, Craft and Tailored. Mr. Craft and Tailored, I think you might have nailed it. And if that's the case, I mean, what else? Did they mention anything here? Applied hour markers? No, they don't. So this is the sad, when you don't actually have the real images, I guess you can check out the website. If you have the images or something moving, turning the watch over, flying tourbillon pulse. See, that's the thing. Normally the tourbillon counts as your minute counter, but if that's the case, maybe this just spins. Hold on. Maybe this is the rotor. I think we might be getting somewhere. Are we, are we breaking through? This could be the rotor that winds the watch because there's no rotor at the back. Hmm. Rotor on the outside of the movement is really cool. Now that is interesting. And you see how that suddenly changes. This is why you should do your homework before you do presentations. But, you know, this is me. I didn't do it on a Saturday. <laughs> so, yeah, very interesting then if that's the case. I do like that quite a lot. And I'm wondering if the, if the use of a name on the right-hand side is even necessary then at that stage. If it's, if it's I mean, if, if the signature of the watch is also the rotor that spins, that's a nice feature that ties it in nicely. Thank you. And I'm seeing a couple of comments from... Piroka saying the logo spins. Thank you. And it's great. Almost like a Rolex fluted dial. We're going to see some fluted dials later on, I think. Um, fascinating. Pilot style. Welcome to the show. And the rest of you who I haven't said hi to again. Um, Cubald. <laughs> Cubald, I like your name. Bought the Black Bear 58 Blue last weekend. On the week on the wrist. Love it. Yeah. It's a great watch. Uh, there's. I love the fact that so, more people, so many more people are jumping on Tudor for that that idea that they're getting such a good experience out of it. The watch is by no means a slouch, and that's what makes it super, super special. Again, tag me in the chat with an at symbol or a hashtag. I'll be able to see it quicker, and we can get to the questions a bit easier. Keep on asking questions. Whatever you like about watch-related stuff, vintage watches. We have a vintage watch specialist in the chat. If you'd like any questions to be, to be answered, now's your time. Very good call. Uh, by the way, Cam, I got a um, Smith's W10. After over a year of searching, I found a really nice example. I'm going to do a review of it like in the next two weeks. It's such cool watches, man. Okay, so I think we're done with Charles. Interesting piece, got to say. Um, okay, we can make some more remarks on things like why a nylon strap for the watch. It's almost 100 grand. A nylon strap as an experience. The thing is all white gold and the movement's beautiful. It's a tourbillon and it has... I think the strap's a bit conflicting with such a high-performing watch, especially in this luxury segment. They say blue fabric strap with 18-karat white gold buckle. Look, it looks, it looks modern, but hey, <laughs> not everyone's cup of tea. Okay, let's, let's get to the next one if I can navigate. Yeah, Giro Perigo. Now, this one we have seen a lot of. This is the three flying bridges. This, the brand is very well known for this arrangement, and it is a beautiful example. I mean... Uh, if you want to watch that epitomizes GP and what they do, this is it. The difference is, I believe, for the first time, they've used pink gold as a part of the combination and have done the weirdest thing of all to break up that. They've used pink gold as the three bridges in the center of the dial. So these three bridges divide up the dial very nicely, evenly balanced. But they've put DLC coating, I believe, or PVD coating on it to to cover up the reflectiveness the sheen of the rose gold so that's something uh you don't expect to see that every day that was really the breakthrough they've made a lot of these watches in the past uh they have done a couple of collaboration exercises i think recently they did something with aston martin and it's very difficult to even read aston martin on the dial but it is beautiful i think that that verticality it's just it's just nailed if we get try to try and find a good okay a good top down image you have the pure verticality of the movement components, which is very nice. And then all the horizontals are taken up by the structural components. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, this is hort horterology. This is not your typical everyday wearing piece, but, and they're not cheap either. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they PVD coated the gold bridges, but left the edges here yeah, with brilliant contrast. That's another thing you notice is that these edges are highly polished, so you get to see that nicely. And in a way, I think one of the downsides this watch had in the past was that it was just too reflective. So in a way, this does work well. I'm just wondering if they couldn't have used a, a different material entirely. 
my gripe, I think with like with most of you uh, with PVD and those kinds of finishes is that uh, it's not a true reflection of the material. The design person in me wants the true material on the forefront. So, so given the choice, I would go with something like forged carbon instead, because that's a realistic material. It's not hiding any of its flaws, should we say. Uh, this is, you know, you should say PVD is almost covering up the material, which is not. Um, yeah, and Thomas is saying the photo actually looks quite good. I thought that it didn't really look good when it first saw it. A nice thing is that a lot of these press photos, they make a great difference when you look at the watch. Yeah, these pieces are amazing. You're not only getting a fully skeletonized arrangement, but it's so easy to read and break up as well. Stunning. Okay, let's get back into the chat. It's like three bow ties. Yeah, I think that's what it's been what it's been called in the past. Uh, classic GP design. It is. They. Yeah, this is the only one they released. Again, a white gold bracelet would bump this price up a lot. I think you're talking about the last the last one, Cam. Yeah, I agree. George and many more of you who I'm not saying hi to. Uh, so, so S, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name, but um, you said never been a fan of watches that you can see your wrist through, though. Hmm. And especially when you have lots of wrist hair, it can be a detractor. Yeah, I agree with that point. So let's get into looking at the specs. We have the three flying bridges, which is the the jam, which makes it special. 44 mils wide, so it's a pretty big monster. Another thing is that it's it's got this you know universal opening around the full sapphire back and front makes it yeah it's it's special i mean you can just see it here that the floating arrangement is pretty stunning to say the least uh the dauphine hands as well i mean that's a great point modern take on dauphine hands semi-skeletonized as well is this the neo bridges model i think that's what they call it this they, they they call it the three flying bridges but i believe the neo bridges is the same it's in the same category uh wrist hair magnifier yeah exactly exactly uh hard to read the time though <clears throat> Yeah, that's just another thing to notice. It's not very easy to read it at a glance, even though it, there, there are colors that break it up. How would you fix that? It's the downside. That's the issue with most skeletonized pieces. We're not done with skeletonized watches, by the way. We're going to see some more later on. Uh, Turbo is joining. He says, I just logged in to say hi. I got to go to the movies. Oh, isn't that cool? You can actually go to movies again. <laughs> it's great to have you, Turbo. Uh, enjoy your time out. The rest of you who are joining in Saturday, wherever you are in the world, or Sunday, Oh, it's just great having you. Thank you so much for joining in. And I can't thank you enough, everyone, for the support and for reaching out, for the emails. We're definitely going to do another wrist shot week soon, in the coming weeks. Uh, yeah, this time of the year, we, we're trying to get out and enjoy ourselves a bit more. I think the watch content can take a break for a bit. Uh, the frequency is 21,600. So that means you have a longer power reserve, of course, 60 hours, which is great. I like that even matters with these pieces. You know, you're getting these watches for the watchmaking. 138 G's. We haven't really started on a affordable approach <laughs> with these with these watches today, have we? Uh, normally we we try and like edge into it, but not this time. Don't worry, it's going to get better. There are some Oruses and Breitlings and stuff we can chat about later. Um, outer bezel has marks for the hours. That is useful. Thank you for that, Cam. That is useful. Makes for reading, but the hands are hands are always the most difficult part to get right on a skeletonized wash. They're just a handful, I think, that manage to do it properly. Water again. I feel like I'm going to need Fisherman's Friends ASAP today. So simple things like 260 components for the movement, 27 joules. This is simply an hour and minutes watch with a tourbillon. Like that's, <laughs> like that's even a bad thing. Uh, it's amazing. It is amazing. Okay. Should we stick on this? We're going to move on. Bargain. <laughs> watch beginner. Yeah. For someone who's a watch beginner in this hobby, I think you're looking at the most ideal watches to start with. You know, absolute bargain. 130 Gs. Okay, next up we have, and very soon I'm going to have to type in the names of these pieces, which is going to be a chore. Uh, I'm going to have to do that now. Oh, no, this is the last one. So this wasn't technically a part of the launches next to the others. IWC is not a part of the Geneva Watch Days, but it just happened to coincide and it worked out pretty well. This is what is called the Blue Ceramic Laureus first look. So IWC looks like your typical pilot, but this was for a charity sport for good i believe and they do i do have an example of the case back for us to look at now this raises a few interesting points because we have seen um iwc experimenting whoa that's not going to help iwc experimenting with ceramic on their cases <clears throat> okay let me get back into the chat because i'm going to be missing you guys a lot a lot a lot 
uh, low readability is good because it's an excuse to look at the watch more. I mean, I mean, that's the main reason why you get skeletonized pieces at the end of the day, right? That is the reason. Black hands would have been better. I don't know so much, Koji. It's it's so difficult. It's one of the downsides. Blue hands often work pretty well. That was the whole idea of heat bluing hands back in the day, so that they could break up the generally a white dial. Uh, it's pretty amazing to think the heat bluing was for corrosion resistance, but also for added legibility on dials, which is amazing. Um, so let's chat about this about this gadget. The IWC, I'm making, making nailed it. So it's the IWC Swatch Watch Edition. That's the first thing that came to mind when I saw this. The the Mojave series that IWC released. Let's actually hop into searching and pull it up quickly. IWC or the Mojave, if you're not from America. Um, IWC Mojave was a series they brought out, I believe, this year at, uh, what do they call it? Watches and Wonders now. There's so many shows, you just lose track. But I really like this. It was, do we have some high-res images we can use? Monochrome is always good. This is their chrono. They also had a simple time-only model. This was actually featured in the Q2 summary um, of Watch Report, which I will link in the corner of the screen if I remember, uh, which is a bit more, you know, uh, comprehensive where we cover the quarterly roundups of the best releases of the year. This was the first time they brought out this, yeah, the Desert Sand Edition. This was the first time they brought out this idea of a contrasting ceramic case. And it's it's exciting. I like the prospect. But with this one, the navy blue doesn't seem to work as well as khaki. Um, I will pull up some more images of it in a second for us to look at. Surprising they don't give me the standard. They also call this the Top Gun Edition. There's so many names. IWC Pilots Watch Chronograph Top Gun Edition Mojave Desert. It's like quite a mouthful. Uh, it's a bit boring, George says. And I mean, that's that's the basis of the argument. What was the thinking, really? The blue is, I'm guessing the blue is for the charity. It's for the event. This, is, this has always been the color that they've used but it doesn't really jump out at you. <laughs> IWC calls the movement IWC manufacturer movement, and Odinki wrote in-house, but it's in fact a Baumatic movement. Pilot style, I had no idea about that. That is amazing. A no date would be much better from Hoff. I agree. IWC is driven to put dates on their watches. They have a handful that don't, <laughs> not enough pizzazz, khaki. <laughs> yeah, that's it, khaki as in, as in yeah, car key. Uh, are there any more images of this watch? Okay, so in in the hand, let's see if I can get some close-up shots of it for us to look at. So it's 41 mil, I believe. Uh, has done a 41 mil three-hand pilot for the Laureus. That's the Laureus Charity, 12th edition, 2018, commemorated black PVD case. So they have done a similar watch like this for, a, for an event in the past. I mean, there are some beautiful IWC pieces out there. Similar aesthetics to this, different mark, mark 15s, 17s, 18s, 100s. There's so, so many references of them now. Uh, of course, the big one that we talk about is the new big pilot, the 43 mil, which is standout, absolutely incredible. I think I'll pull it up for us just to, just to enjoy it since we have all the tech at our hands at the moment, 43 mil. This watch has definitely been gathering a lot of momentum uh, on a Jubilee bracelet, or should we say Jubilee inspired bracelet? I don't know if it works as well for a pilot watch. It's a bit dress oriented, which is nice. Not bad though. Here is a comparison between the two. Oh, it's so good. It is so, so good. So it's called the Big Pilot's Watch 43. This came out, I believe, Watches and Wonders this year. Uh, okay, let's get back in the chat. I thought it looked like a Swatch too. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind, right, Cam? I agree. IWC is good at what they do. They are. This pilot watch is such an excellent example of that. So many more people have been put onto the brand because of its release. The size, I think, is bang on right. It's not too big or too small. 43 is ideal for a pilot piece, which is fantastic. Um, in-house, so so this is from, from Truman saying, in-house uh, 69000 chrono is based on the Valju 7750, I hear. What movement is it out there where it's very difficult to source parts? Is it the Velju 7750? I believe. I don't know. Prefer the big pilots. Proves my no date point. Yes. And this is why I like to bring it up. This is the only one that comes to mind immediately that doesn't have a date. And look at it. It's just stand out. So this was done for a charity. It was done for a special cause. So we can give them a pass for that. Watch brands tend to do it very often. Uh, so not the most exciting. This is not a part of Geneva Watch Days. But the next one is, if I can get it on screen, let's see what it is. 
and I'll have to refer to my crib notes, come back. Oh, it's the Uberk. What I can do is just type in this. Let's see. Uh, let's see, 2021, maybe that'll help. No, that's definitely not going to help. I need to put the proper name in. It's the U100, I believe. Just give me a moment. Uh, it's a UR100 Electron. Jeepers. Is that what it's called? That's another thing to uh, just bear with me for a sec. I um Electrum. Because I'm drinking alcohol and I'm trying to present simultaneously while keeping everything on track, I will make a few mistakes along the way. But that's the joy of the exercise. Uh, just sit here for the laughs. Enjoy the laughs. Now, Uvork is an amazing brand. The watches are incredible. Uh, they're actually their their primary competition, I would say, in this you know hyper bombastic futuristic area is a brand like Richard Meal. But apparently, these are like a tenth of the price of Richard Meal. Now, the downside we could say about the watch is the case material is definitely not for everyone's taste. But Uvork is known to work with titaniums and really high-class components, forged carbons and all of that. So the summary of this piece, um, for gold, uh, using an ancient alloy. This should be interesting to read. I did not know about this. Um, the aesthetics are the first thing that grab you. The the rounded Raymond, you're never late. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> There's a chicken staring at me down at 12. Uh, hold on a sec. Is this is this on my end? I, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Are we talking about this little gadget here? I don't know. We'll get to that in a moment. The first thing that comes to mind when we look at the case finishing, it reminds us of 70s watch dials, don't you think? Has that highly classic feel from back then where the, the designs are quite bombastic, <laughs> not big on that Uwork. The colors are definitely not for everyone's taste. Uh, tenth the price cooler. Yeah, I mean, it's it's stunning. The, the one thing they love to do are these bright accent colors for the hours. And to read the time, I'm sure most of you know, uh, this barrel in the center rotates. There are a couple of brands out there that use a similar system to this, like Gorilla. That's one make that I can think off the top of my head. Um, rotating barrels, you have your hour there. You have a pointer that aims at the dial from naught to 60. As this rotates fully, so the next hour comes across. It's very. It's actually a very easy reading experience once you understand it. Um, again, super high horology. This is not simple stuff that you can just piece together in a garage. So, Electrum, that's the name of this. We're talking about Felix Baumgartner now. I'm going to try and speed read this. An alloy of gold and silver with trace amounts of copper and other metals. So, it's not a pure alloy of a certain material. That Well, no alloy is pure. Uh, but the combination is, they don't give you the percentages, I don't think. Uh, but pretty amazing looking example. Electrum has biblical beginnings. Oh God, now we're getting deep. If you want to read what's going on on the right-hand side, be my guest. We've got Egyptian dynasties, got Ezekiel going on here, Hebrew scriptures. We just, just take it all in. Listen to that. <laughs> uh, I'll get into the chat while I am. Steampunk, yes, steampunk was a part of their inspiration, I believe. Hyperfuturism, something out of the 80s in a way, you know, that you know, alien aesthetic. Uh, hitting the water again. Tenth the price. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless just while. Well. It's an interesting watch, Sanchez. It's definitely not for everyone, though. Um, it's it's one of those prototypical experimental examples. It's amazing, though. I mean, look at the loom at the base of the dial here. It is it is incredible. Also, just like how simply you know, the, the case is pretty complex when you look at everything there. But it's so simply arranged with the, the integrated lug set up. The crown at the 12 is in the ideal position. It's out of the way, nicely balanced. I don't know if Fratello is going to be helpful when I open these images or if it's going to break somewhere, but only limits, limited to 25 pieces. So I'm pretty sure these watches are all gone now, but, you know, so I see Cam is leaving, uh, meeting a few 911s in Malibu for a drive. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Enjoy yourself, Cam. I will send you a message next week. I promise. I have to get back to these messages that sit in my inbox for weeks. <sighs> it's not good. Enjoy yourself. So damn cool. Um, so is the alloy similar to Omega's 9K Seamaster? 9K? Is it, is it a 9K? Are we talking about the latest Sedna scenario? Oh, geez, don't tell me I can't get out of this now. Fratello watches. Um, I don't know. Very interesting point. It all depends on the alloy itself. It's all down to percentages. You know, you know, you have three seven five, thirty seven point five percent gold if it's nine carat. Um, what's it? Nine two five if it's sterling silver, which is ninety two point five percent sterling. 
it's all relative depending on that. And I don't think they give you the percentages. Maybe they do. Uh, let's look at the specs a little bit more. Uh, do you have any more descriptions here? They talk about mystery and obscurity and all this stuff. Inclusion of palladium rather than silver ah, means the alloy benefits from palladium's superior corrosion resistance. Mwah. But I mean, gold is also very corrosion resistant. So yeah, fascinating. A couple of brands are doing this though. There was mention about palladium being used in the new Omega model, I believe, um, from the 90s. Look it up. So this is when it originated, the 90s. It might be useful. And I hope I got your name right again. Um, per Peruka. Um, it's not a watch for me, but I admire the technicalities. Yeah. I mean, personally, if, if given the choice to wear a Uruk, I would, would be going full stealth, black on black with some fancy carbon fiber or titanium blend, something heat treated. That's amazing. Uh, Mason, good evening. Just quickly tabbed through the stream to see what I missed so far. Yeah, not much. Just a bit of a wake up, a bit of a warm up. We've started how long ago? 35 minutes ago maybe i was wrong in saying that the stream would be short um now we've got some serious questioning here everyone can project their own universe into this design boy i see the tears of an ancient greek theater what okay it's a little bit much for me designers lap this stuff up by the way we're told to have this kind of narrative to our projects which is I think very important. It, it can design can when you have these kinds of stories, it helps sell products. Um, it also helps you thinking on a different tangent to everyone else. It doesn't just look like a watch. You try and think of it in a bit more of a creative way. So I can understand this, but it's a bit a bit heavy handed. <laughs> then again, there are only twenty five pieces of these, so you know these aren't going to last very long. Um, ancient Greece. More talk about. Geez, this is a long article, but it's a cool machine. And will they give you specs on the percentages of metal used? Probably not. Satin brushed, 18 carat, 2N Electrum, gold palladium alloy. Yeah. 60 grand, give or take. So yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not easy to get your hands on, but uh, a worthy example. Uwork is a brand to definitely take some time and to look at hitting the water yet again. Beautiful. I think the casework is something commendable, something definitely to look at. Awesome brand. Once you start wearing machines and go down the rabbit hole, you'll be in love. I'm sure I would be, Megan. I mean, it's it's like the modern Aventador on the wrist, you know, just a pure performance sports machine. What are those markings on the outer bezel? Oh, I, th I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the, the distance 35,742 kilometers. Uh, I used to know this. It's got to do with uh, revolutions of the movement, maybe. Or maybe it has some celestial link, like to do with space and the, the rotation of the Earth. Maybe that's the, how far the Earth rotates as the movement winds down. Something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm, there are a couple of Uwerk owners in the, in the chat who could maybe help us out here. But cool machine. Very different and obscure. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next example. I should also mention that after the show, I'll, in the comments, put all the names of the pieces in the in the description for you to catch up on if you've missed something. Okay, so next is Breitling. We're going back to, back down to earth. Oh, come on. There we go. Back down to reality and to earth. This is the, I'm going to try and get this right, the Breitling Top Time Classic Car Capsule Collection. <laughs> try and say that five times. I'm going to try. Hold on, hold on. Breitling Top Time Classic Cars Capsule Collection. Classic Car Capsule Collection. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful. What is the idea here? Well, this is trippy. I don't think you'll be enjoying this on your side. So I'll try and I'll break these up for you to look at. So here are the three watches on the left in a bit more of a rendered position. And on the right, we have the real photographs of them. Pretty decent renders, I do say. Um, they've nailed it. I mean, they look almost identical to the actual launches. Okay, so what do we have? On the um, far left, we have a Shelby Cobra. In the middle, we have a Mustang, Ford Mustang. And then we have a Corvette Stingray. That's what it's based on. <laughs> Thomas says, mm, sorry, Brightly. I'm going to get into the chat now. So look, the first thing we can say is, yes, it's a gimmicky thing to have car brands and that assigned to your watch. It's, it's not something that's going to age very well. But I believe when someone is a car owner with one of these cars, it works very well, I think. It's a part of the upholstery. Um, <laughs> Megan says, on a pit stop listening. Yeah, good. We're talking about cars. It's pretty ideal, Megan. Um, where's the Hemi Cuda version? Yes, I believe they're going to do a whole range. They're going to do Porsche. They're going to do Ferrari. 
pretty impressive that they can get the names of these brands associated to their watches. Let's full screen some of these images for us to enjoy. So the difference between the three is that the Cobra is a bi-compax where the Mustang and the Corvette are a tri-compax arrangement. The Zorro top time is cool. There's some beautiful ones that they did. They did a bow tie variant earlier on. I could actually pull them up while we were at it. Why not? Since we're chatting about this so much. Uh, let's see. So Breitling top time. The one that comes to mind immediately is the bow tie is, is one that's definitely worth looking at. It's a stunning example. Let's get it on the wrist quickly. I hope this is okay and you're able to see this fine. It's not the best image, but you get an idea of what it looks like. Greatly arranged. Uh, probably one of my favorites in the category. Surely there's a better image to use. That's probably the best. I, I absolutely love this. I mean, it's it's a design that looks, you know, it sits right in that late 60s point where we're transitioning out of that uh, more you know simplified 50s period. We're getting a bit more creative with our use of our hands and minute hands and central hands. Uh, nicely done. But then they also did things like the Deus as an example, or the Deuce. I don't know how you would want me to say it, but uh, Cafe Racer in Benzene Veritas, which is in, in petrol we trust, I think, something like that. And it was, it was aligned with motorcycles. They've done one with Norton, I believe. They've made a few Premier models. Great example. So they obviously are expanding on this a bit more in the car space. Not for everyone, but... Uh, <laughs> you try and catch up the chat. Getting some great, great discussions going on here. Um, what should I do? I'll hold on. Ooh, this is a good shot. Oh, this is stunning. If you want one top time, I think this is it. It's just so well done. Beautiful arrangement. Breitling, I must say, I mean, they've really come out strong over the last couple of months with their releases. The Premier line, many others. The, the calibers they're now using, I believe they're sharing across with Tudor. We can chat about these in a second a bit more too. I think there's some shots of cars that we can enjoy. Uh, Breitling with not, not so much of a bright release. Yeah, I agree. They could have done... Yeah, it's hard. I mean, how do you manage? This is a good question to actually pose to the chat. Um, let me just see if there are any more questions before I get down to it. Um, I don't know. I had some Puma Ferrari trainers. <laughs> Non-Ferrari owner, I think that was fine. If I owned a Ferrari and wore a Ferrari shoot, it would be very weird. Mm, good point. But these are classic cars. So this is inspired. I think there's a difference there. A classic car, you want that accoutrement as a part of the collection, don't you think? Uh, Deuce X watching a, I like that. I really like that. Um, <laughs> wearing Ferrari crows, screams, mug me. So um, is that how you say it? The dais from, from James. Welcome, James. Thank you for that. And many more of you that I haven't said hi, I wasted again. I like that name, uh, Deus. That's probably how you say it properly. Sorry. Um, how do you manage to do something like this, a release like this? I'll get this top time off and go back to these. How do you manage to do a release like this and not have your watch feel kitsch? <clears throat> That's such a difficult thing to do. I mean, there's almost this stigma whenever you associate a watch brand with a car or any kind of product that has another brand name, it immediately has a stigma attached to it along there. So is there is there a method that you can actually work around? This is why I'd love to own my own studio because this is the kind of like problem solving I would sit through with a team and say, okay, how are we going to get this out in such a way that the result is unanimously loved? I think this, this Shelby looks amazing. That's so well done. And at the same time, not feel like something that's going to age the second it comes out. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Wasted again. I should be wasted too. I'm going to take another hit. Talisker 10 this evening. Again, I'm running low the whiskey stores, but you know, come winter time again, I'm going to stock up. Um, so another hit. I definitely have to own the car to own the watch, Dan says. I think there's something special. Do they have any shots of the cars? Let's have a look. I uh, don't think so. I do love how they've paired the colors pretty nicely. Um, red, a red dial is is bold. Whether or not you like the car brand affiliation, this is cool. I mean, unless you, you're a diehard for Corvette and, and the brand in itself, it's very difficult to know what this is. You could just think of it as a, a racing chronograph. The green is also pretty charming. The green referring back to Bullet and, uh, and the Mustang from that time. Ooh, I mean, this looks good. This actually reminds me the aesthetic. The way the sub dials are, are like rounded, very harshly rounded rectangles reminds me of the front of a Shelby in a way. Shelby Cobra, of course. 
uh, unless you're 12. I mean, that's a dark star. How do you do it? How do you not make it feel kitsch? And it's, it's almost impossible, I think, in this day and age, at least. I mean, these watches, realistically, are these watches being aimed at the enthusiast or not? And I think that's the downside. These are aimed more at the car owners, which is a really good thing for them. Again, I say, when you when you put on the driving gloves, you've got a wooden steering wheel, wouldn't be that bad to open the glove box and say that you have this watch that you can just throw on while you're in your Shelby for the day. The Cobra Commander, I like that, Koji. I think that was Bro Dinky that, that did that. That was amazing. Okay, so I think we've we've discussed <laughs> get out the vet in an AP or Rolex. I mean, that's it though, right? Yeah, I mean, the Corvette Stingray. Should I get to a car quickly? It's one of my favorites. I believe it's the Mark II. Corvette Stingray is an absolute beaut of a car. Uh, the Mark I, pretty amazing. I think my, my old man has, has a real fixation of this car. He loves the original Stingray. But my favorite is, is the flat nose. Uh, any good examples to look at? I mean, of course, of course, they're super low quality. These were just beautifully done back then. So unlike a lot of the typical muscle cars you saw at that time, you know, the flat aesthetic, very sharp, streamlined design, pop-up headlights that are well hidden. Even the bumper looks fantastic. It's just, it's a beautiful machine. And then, of course, there's some examples of mock-built, oh, they're just, they're so good. Yeah, would I wear the Corvette Stingray watch getting out the car? I don't know. This is this is the example that they based it on, basically. I don't think I would. I don't think I would, but it's what a beautiful machine. You know, I'm I'm from the Southern Hemisphere. I'm I'm based in Europe, so of course I have a prejudice to love Ferraris and, and Porsches and all of that. But American Muscle, there were some amazing cars, and this one of the best. <laughs> A Corvette is not low quality. <laughs> yeah, did I, did I mention? Okay, okay, let's, let's carry on. So definitely not not for everyone. Should I do like a, a communal vote thing going on in the chat or will that just crash the page like it did last show? If you were a part of the last wrist shot week, the web page crashed like three or four times while I was on air. It's probably going to happen again, knowing my luck. Maybe not now that I've mentioned it. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, the best C2 Corvette 1967. Ooh, that's so good. 425 cubic inch, 480 horsepower. They're so beautiful. Just stunning designs. Uh, if you own a nice car, these these watches are probably below your price range for timepieces. Yeah, I agree. So I think the, the category they were trying to jump on again, I'll repeat myself, trying to appeal to the car enthusiast. And I think this will work. I do believe this will work for a handful of people out there who maybe just type in the Corvette watch. All of a sudden, this will come up. Corvette would pair nice with the Hoya Carrera. Ooh, tell me what that is. That's the way to do it. Okay, let's move on to the next example. I don't know what. Oh, hold on. It's a completely different world now. Louis Erard. So will I be able to search this easily enough? Uh, not Alain Silberstein, but we could pull this up just for fun while we're at it. Uh, so what is the name? It's the regulator. Yeah, that's the difficulty now. Just bear with me as I try and get these names out because I am semi-plastered as well as excellent regulator. I think that's the example. And 2021, right? Come on. Any examples here for us to look at? Four days ago, time and tide, your beauty. Thank you. These, I mean, this, this first watch that stood out to me, let's just get this full screen. So we have three different stone dials. We have one that is um, lapis lazuli on the far right. In the middle, we have a venturine. I believe Aventurine is a manufactured stone. There's great science behind it, by the way. Uh, and then we have beautiful malachite in the center. This is just insane. It looks so good. Why don't more watches have malachite dials? Again, sorry if this looks quite trippy on the left-hand side of the screen. If that's better, I don't know. I think I'll just like semi-shave them off on either end. So it's a regulator. You have hours, minutes, seconds separately placed on the dial. Oh, this is so good. What a beautiful finish. I mean, can you imagine what the live like the video of this watch must look like? Just got to go back to the page. So let's try and break it down. There, there have been a couple of these examples before. Louis Erard most recently was the Alan Silberstein partnership, which we have featured a couple of times. Um, this one, you know, these are limited to 99 pieces with a stone dial. Of course, it's rare and attractive and all that stuff. I must say they are pretty stunning. Uh, and bear in mind that there were only 20 releases or so from this event this week. So we're kind of limited when it comes to content. So I'm trying to, uh-oh. Oh, I was on the page too long. Now I have to subscribe. Um, 
So it means then that you know we have we have a few things to look at, so not too much. But the beauty is, ask me some questions, and we can definitely jump on other subjects as we're going. Uh, I'm not addressing the chat, so I think I should. Anything more? Uh, the vote is great. Do it. You reckon I should, Thomas? If it crashes the page, I think it'll be a bit of a disaster, but we can. We can try. Um, people with expensive classic cars, I would imagine, wear Vacheron 1921. What a beautiful watch. 1921 is an absolute dream of a machine. Gold Amiga Malachite. Yes, that was a Seamaster they did, right? Yeah, they did a handful of those. So, yeah, I can understand why this watch is not to everyone's taste. I think, I mean, one of the big downsides is the, the material that they've chosen, the polished, I would imagine, white gold. It doesn't really work that well on a, on a you know, highly polished champagne-like dial. It disappears completely. It's difficult to read the time. This is excellent because it's an off lighting and all of that. Still unique. They mention in the in the description of this watch. I can agree. Got to say that running seconds arrangement is spot on. Excellently done. Uh, regulator, of course. It. What I like about it. It's definitely not for everyone. Is that you can move your eyes around the dial a little bit, a little bit easier. These are around thirty two hundred. Let's have a look, Rick. That's a very interesting question. If that's the case, I'll be impressed. Uh, 42 mil diameter, if you're interested. Self-winding. Is this a liter-based caliber? You're kidding me. All models are powered by a self-winding solita. So yes, you could be right. You know what? That's quite a nice proposal. What do you think about that? That changes that changes the game quite a lot when you think it is 2,900 Swiss francs for this. Huh. You know, this might be one of the most affordable regulators on the market at the moment. Correct me if I'm wrong. But just... Pretty amazing, all in all. Love the photography, how they presented it. Uh, that is that is not bad, got to say, because, I mean, most times when you see, I mean, the, the collaboration between Lou Earhart and Alan Silberstein, those are crazy. Those are like perpetual calendars and all that stuff. This is, hmm, well worth looking at. <laughs> Indecent, <laughs> Hans says. Uh, yeah, I mean, Megan loves Lou Earhart. She has a few of them. Uh, the, the Alan Silberstein thing is it's an amazing partnership. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna jump to the next one. This is not into it. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I mean, these watches are definitely not for everyone. They are. Uh, there's a couple of outlandish designs that we're going to be looking at, but the beauty is that we're looking at different brands for a change, not the typical. Yeah, the Salita movement costs nothing. I mean, that's the dance. I mean, that's that's a big price up, and that's probably down to the the stone dial that they're using on these pieces. Hmm. Regulators are Louis Earhart's main thing, George mentions. Thank you for that. So this is their jam. This is what they're known for. Okay, we're going to move on to the next example. We're currently on 7 of 22. Let's see what's next, if I can get through this page. Okay, so let's chat about this now. Uh, Bulgari. This is the Octo, but it's not your typical one. It's called the Papillon, which is, whoa, no, not that one. Uh, Papillon. Let's see if we can get this down. This one was surprising. I have some remarks to make on this Octo Roma series. Yeah, uh, this one I really like, but the, the other world timer, stunning dial. We can chat about it. I've done a bit of a, a design tweak. We can definitely put a vote up in the chat and enjoy that for a bit. Uh, let's just have a look at this piece in general. So we've got, it looks like a central tourbillon Absolutely stunning arrangement. I mean, on the left-hand side, you can see it all there. Uh, revisits the magnificent Papillon Tourbillon jumping hours, painted a butterfly, minutes, central hand. It looks great. It really does look great. I think this is what Bulgari should double down on a lot. Papillon's a good movie. It sure is. Steve McQueen, Dustin Hoffman, they nailed it in that film. I loved it. The old watch lady is here. <laughs> Julian, I don't know if we're chatting about old watch lady from... from Instagram or not. I don't know. Louis Herard is all quality in the dial. Big saving in the movement. I prefer a watch that is solid front and back. I like that pilot style. A lot of brands do it. You notice that, I mean, some makers, you know, focus more on the design of the product and not so much about the movement and all of those components. I'm just going to leave this on the screen for you to enjoy. And then we can look at the watch in more detail. Oh, not Papillon. Oh, did I say something wrong there? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the Octo case needs to change or leave. It's dead at this point. Okay, Pilot Style. I, I like where you're going with this because I have edited <laughs> the design of the, the case. Much to many people's chagrin, we're going to do some uh, voting, I think, on it at a later stage. And I'm sure there are going to be lots of negatives and lots of no's, but let's have some fun with it. So we've chatted about Bulgari a lot. 
I've I've never seen the Papillon series before. This is a new oh, monochrome. Oh no, hold on, hold on. Got to zoom out. Difficult to do this with one hand. There we go. That's what she said. So we have. <clears throat> I like this fact that it's a twenty-four hour dial instead of your typical twelve-hour arrangement. Uh, the Royal Oak case shape does not look good. The Royal Oak case shape doesn't look good. We're chatting about um, this. We're chatting about the actual Royal Oak, Thomas. Yeah, the Octo case. It's again. I'll go back to this point. It's so difficult to come up with a design that is breakthrough next to its competition. Integrated bracelets, all of that stuff. That's always the rave. So yeah, it's. I can. I can understand the toil that a lot of designers probably go through. I mean, Bulgari has always been known for their bombastic, outlandish designs and what they do. I think the fact that they've made this design a mainstay, especially with the Octo Fortissimo line, pretty commendable. So another example of a jump, a jump hour. Hours at the top, minutes going from right to left, big tourbillon in the middle. It is beautiful. I think the typeface and how it's been done is also excellently arranged. Oh, I like it. I like this a lot more than the, the Roma. The dial on the Roma is good, but the case, uh, we can have some fun with it. Uh, it wasn't originally a Daniel Roth design they acquired. Eric, I have no idea. I should read the description. Maybe we can pull it up in a moment. <laughs> um what a beauty of a watch. Bulgari really gets it going for me, masterpiece. But I have a preference for the but I do have a preference for the world timer. Yes. So Sanchez, we're gonna chat about that world timer because the dial, flipping masterclass. One of the most beautiful dials I think I've seen this year. I thought it was a date at the top. It might be. No, it can't be. I'm uh, maybe not. Hold on a sec. No, I'm pretty sure this is not independent. Okay, I've got to look at the description. Let's try and read this thing while we're at it. Let's get out of this somehow. Brief background, the Bulgari Group required two heavyweight names, Daniel Roth, Gerald Genta. Oh, here we go. This makes more sense. The acquisition was instrumental to laying the foundations of development of the success for Octophony Smoke Collection. Uh-huh. That makes more sense. So does this mean the design was more linked to Daniel Roth and Genta? I'm, I'm interested in this. Very interested in this. Shazbot, welcome to the show. Good having you here. Papillon time display, 24-hour jumping hours. I would really like that. That is something you don't see very often. So it means then that setting it is a bit more of a pain, but the result is that you get a more centralized understanding of the time when it's being set. Taking a hit from the Peruvian coffee blend, Machu Picchu, I'll be with you in a moment. The centrally mounted Omega is nicer. The Omega World Timer. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's also a tourbillon. I think they do have a tourbillon arrangement too. Absolutely stunning. Okay. So I, Eric, very good point about this. Um, mentioning the central central component. And I'm sure you can read the specs. I'm not going to read through all of this, but it's all on the screen for you to check out. Stunning. I mean, what I do like, <clears throat> I've had my reservations with the Octo case that it draws from, actually, let's, let's, let's chat about it with the steel variant in a second. Jumping our mechanism. Should we look at the price? This ain't going to be cheap. I think we can all agree there. Um, I prefer the case of the Mickey Mouse, <laughs> uh, but just would like it without Mickey Mouse on it. George, there are some great examples of Gerald Genta designs from previous years with more of an uber aesthetic. That kind of numeral typeface it looks so good. It looks so, so good. So unlike the more comical arrangement of the Mickey Mouse variant. Rose gold crown, white black ceramic insert matches the elegant matte black color scheme. I really do like this. This does speak to the 1930s and might as well talk about it now, has serious Art Deco motifs. 1930s was like the main area of draw for them. So the fact that you now have a jump hour attached to it, I mean, think of the watchmaking back then. They were playing around with that stuff then. So you have the case matching the complication, and I think that, that combo works nicely. Okay, carrying on. Uh, I'm liking the fact that everyone's listening in, but I, I can't address the chat while I'm at it. So Caliber 332, if anyone's interested, uh, Master Watchmakers, an amazing looking movement. And this is a criticism we can have when we look to the Roma in comparison, the standard Roma world timer, is that the movement is not as exciting as this. Of course, we're dealing with a completely different arrangement here. I really like a power reserve indicator at the back, out of the way, Nicely done. Very, very nicely done. Uh, a flip and zipper. Welcome. Bloody effing hell, I'm late. You're never late. We've only been running for an hour. We've got another hour plus to go. We're only on watch number nine of 20, so we're doing well. Uh, thank you for the super chat, sir. Pleasure having you here as always. I hope it's great in Canada. <laughs> if you're looking after yourself. 
Should we look at the price or is it price on request? Let's see. To be confirmed, of course, to be confirmed. So no knowing. Once again, another watch that is really, really out of our, our price bracket. Spot on, very Art Deco. The back is stunning. The movement is beautiful. Got this highly, actually, you know what? Speaks to the 30s as well. Highly modern look, but also radiant. You notice very often that they use this motif on, on textures, on wallpapers and things back then. A watch for accountants. <laughs> You know what? I wouldn't mind wearing this if I was an accountant. This is pretty stunning. Five atmospheres, waterproof. So you don't want to go swimming with this watch. Uh, that's that's an important thing to note. To be confirmed, meaning you can't afford it. Yeah, basically you have to put in a request and they'll tell you politely on the phone. Oh, sorry, we can't help you with this. But let's move to the next one, which is the more, and this, this is a fascinating one. One of the standouts of the show for sure. Uh, let's get this right. Octo Roma World Timer. This watch came out with a bang. I mean, such an amazing looking piece. Uh, monochrome again. It comes in both a black arrangement, I think fully DLC coated as well as in stainless. This watch has one of the best dials, I think. Uh, give me a face on shot. One of the best dials I think I've ever seen on a watch. As far as a world timer goes, absolutely spot on. It is beautiful. I th what works so well is that it speaks so true to what Bulgari's design language is, the 12, the 6, that equal balance. The handset, the spacing there is great. And then the world time on the art, should I say the GMT arrangement. So would you call it a GMT? No. The world time arrangement is just excellently done. The best part of all is that I didn't realize it's one of the most affordable that they've ever done. It's one of the most affordable world time comps they've ever made before. The movement a lot to be desired though so this is the weird thing it's like this this movement i mean what would we describe it as it looks almost like a base salita movement which is weird to say on a watch like this next to the the tourbillon that we've just seen so different so so different but gotta say the dial is spot on now we look to the case of this watch. This is called the Octo Roma. I didn't know it was actually called the Octo Roma first. I thought it was just called the Roma and thought to myself, does the Octo Finissimo case work with such a rounded dial? That's the question I immediately jumped on before getting into the piece. And I've done a few tweaks and I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. This is the time when we can get a group vote. Uh, doesn't need a display case back. No, I don't believe it does, Megan. Um, Looks cheap, anyone agree? Talking about the movements, unfortunately, it is a bit of a detractor. But um, if if only it was a Finissimo and not a Roma, then I would run out and buy one today. Okay, so honestly, I did not gravitate to the Octo World Time. It looks functional, but didn't grab me. Instablane. Okay, this is <laughs> Yucto Romana. <laughs> I wasted again. I love it. Roma like the coffee. Roma as in Rome, I guess. That's the name. And interestingly, they've had at the top, I noticed at the top of the dial, they've put Rome as the central time there. I don't know if this rotates or if the, the GMT components rotate instead. So this is the, okay, let's look at a bit of a comparison and we can look at the PVD variant too. Come on, switch across. So this is how it's presented to us. I think we can go for a vote. How are the inner discs rotated, BDEV? I would imagine... You know, this is my very plan. I must say the PVD looks good. There was mention, I think, in the chat from Thomas saying that the, the, the reflections are hidden and the PVD manages to hide a lot of these funky areas. Uh, let's get to the movement. I believe, I mean, as far as I know, there's probably a central gear that just rotates the outer exterior of those two components. Whether or not they're independent or as one unit, the Roma and the... I feel like the actual track in the center rotates... I don't know, maybe you can set them independently. I, I really don't know. Um, I haven't looked at this watch in hand. I don't think there have been many reviews. This has all been uh, rushed, should we say. The, the launch of these watches happened like on Wednesday and stuff this past week. So it's been quick. So let's just chat about this quickly. I will, um, I'll leave a good shot on the screen for us to look at. Actually, I could just look at the description while we're going. <laughs> Shall we get a vote going on this? So... I immediately sat down and said, okay, imagine this wasn't called the Octo and just called the Roma instead. This means they could do away with the Octo case and maybe be a bit more restrained with their approach. So I've taken, if you look on the left-hand side, that's the standard. 
I've moved it across to looking something more Defy-ish. Not to everyone's tastes, not to everyone's liking, but I've adjusted it a bit better down here. Let's have a look at this. So what I've done simply is just remove the, the outer excess of the lugs and the, the flanks of the octa elements. What I should have done is actually hidden these elements at the base here, but you have something that looks, what I wanted to do, what I think makes this watch special and stand out a lot is the dial. I think the dial should be accentuated more. Now, the criticism this has received from a few who are on the panel at the moment is that it looks like something belonging to Michael Kors and, and other makers. It doesn't look like a Bulgari, and I can understand that. It does deviate away from the language a lot. So if this wasn't, just imagine for a second, this wasn't called the Octo, just called the Roma. Maybe it would pull attention differently, and this is probably a better illustration. <clears throat> so there is the standard arrangement, chunky lugs on the sides, chunky shoulders, and now tapered in. I literally did this five minutes before the show, so yeah, it doesn't look the best, but you get an idea that I've, I've thought of an idea of just tapering it down a little bit so it's not too excessive on the face. So yeah, not for everyone, but you know what? I think the, the true celebration for this watch should be the dial and not so much the case, even though um, it's, it's part of its language now, and the Octo name is fully ingrained there so not for everyone sunburst blue or matte sandblasted black provide strong contrast super luminova of course this is an amazing dial honestly it's one of the best arrangements i've seen of a dial this year i think um, they talk about the movement 261 components and what makes this special is the price i think over to be confirmed i'm pretty sure they did mention the price at one stage it's something like eight thousand swiss francs for a world timer is pretty nice. <laughs> the Octo No <laughs> from Mr. Blaine. I like it. I like it. Uh, you made it a PRX. Yeah, why not? Why not? I mean, it does kind of look like a TSO in a way. <clears throat> and that's the downside. I mean, how do you change a case? I mean, it is a radical case. That's always been their jam. How do you change it and not go so far away? All I did was basically just taper off the ends. I've still kept those sharp facets on the end that the watch is known for, but they don't look like spider legs anymore uh dial far too busy to read if you need to know the time somewhere else just ask siri or alexa <laughs> i i honestly think it's one of the best executions of a world time i've seen in this category um looks good i mean the, the dial is so legible to tell the time it's great as far as the world time complication yeah it'll take some time to read it's not the easiest i think you can see the specs on the screen it's not the easiest to see at a glance but you know what not bad. Maybe I like the Romas better than the Finissimos. You know what? I've never been one to follow these pieces very far, so you probably know a lot more about the Romas and, and those examples there. Um, so it's so a mention from Truman saying that the BVL191 or 193 is based on a, a Vacher manufacturer. For, okay, they're used by Hermes Parmigiani. Okay, these are great movements, I, I believe. I mean, I've been hearing lots of talk about it, and especially from, from Hermes and other brands. How do the black hands look against the silver dial? Let's have a look again at the example. Are these these are like black polished hands? Hey, not mm, not bad, not too bad. I think it works pretty well. I must say, the the flatness of of the white on this gray finish. I don't know how it's, it's funny. The case looks nicer in PVD, but the dial looks better in blue with all the polished elements and stuff. So yeah, it's difficult. And I'm missing you, <laughs> missing you in the chat, uh, Salita. No, I was kidding. It's not a Salita. Um, yeah, the rest of you. Sorry that I'm missing you in the chat. I'm trying to, I'm trying to run the edge of my seat here. Bracelet looks like pure chapek. In fact, we're going to have a look at one later on. Of course, the the ret the retro punt in a sec. Voucher is legit, but can't be cheap. Yeah. I'm interested in knowing what the price is going to be, what the markup is. Still, I think it's a pretty fascinating design. Definitely one of the standouts for the show. And what makes it great is that the attention is back on the Octo again. It's not being overshadowed by so many other brands, which is special. And yeah, anyone noticing Rolex ads, ADs renovating stores? Flip and Zippo, interesting question. So he's saying, anyone notice Rolex ADs renovating stores? I did not know that was a thing. Okay, we're moving on to... Number 11, this is the Armand Strong, another name that I do not know much about. I think it's called the Tribute One, yes, and I type in 2021, I think they might give us something. 
Yes, time and tired. Let's have a look. Another beautiful example this is definitely out there and not for everyone. But what a great arrangement of a dial. I mean, simplicity at its finest, nice granular finish to the surfaces. I think you can see there. Uh, the lugs are also, the lugs are funky. They remind you of something belonging to like, you know, 1970s pieces and stuff. Again, these are so different to the usual pieces we discuss on the show, but that's the fun thing. Okay, let's carry on. So 100 hour power reserve, manual winding. That's pretty, pretty cool. I wonder what the beat rate is. So I'm in strong, well-established, independent watchmaker, excels in various levels, integrated manufacturer, producing most parts in-house. Again, I'm sorry that I don't know more about these brands. I am, you know, discovering a lot of them with you, which is not the best thing to do when you're presenting a show. But nice arrangement. I mean, the first thing I think when I see the crown up there is um, is the the longer uh, grandfather clock. I call it. What's it called? The um, tip of my tongue. Ah, oh, oh no! Come on, <laughs> I should know this. I chat about it like virtually every watch show. Um, I don't know. Hold on. I'll, I'll get some more coffee in my brain and we can carry on from there. Getting back to you in the chat. Rolex renovating eddies by working on the empty case motif. Yeah, you know what? That's that's the latest thing they're doing, apparently. They're, <laughs> oh, God. It's it's so sad to see what's happening there. And, you know, with, with regards to fueling gray market interest. Coffee again. My taste must be way off. These look like Ali watches to me. Ooh, I like what Tudor has been doing lately. Tudor feels like our generation of watches. Wasted again. Yeah, I mean, these are primarily dress-oriented pieces, and they're independent watches, which means like entirely bespoke and Zeitwerk. Thank you, Julian. How can I mean how can I not know that name as I'm going? I think I'm actually running out of oxygen in the room. I might actually put myself on mute and open a window because I am kind of semi-dying in here. Um once Rolex gets rid of AD and, and has only boutiques, then it's easier to get a Rolex. We won't have to share revenue and we'll add 20% on current MSRP. We all have our thoughts on the subject. It must, I must say, lots of brands are starting to get rid of their authorized dealers. And I think it's it's to their benefit. It puts more control in the hand of the manufacturer, which I think is so important. Um, AP is one that's doing that a lot. If Aaron says, please don't die on us, I'll try not to. I'll try not to be a bit awkward just sitting here without without the show going anywhere. Um, so what do we think? Must say I like the asymmetry and the arrangement of having the the, the full mainspring housing on the outside is, is charming, especially when you wind the watch, you get to experience those gears moving. Nice asymmetrical arrangements, good use of two-thirds on the dial. Come on, Magic Mouse. Good use of two-thirds spacing on the dial <clears throat> makes it actually, to your eye, it makes a lot of sense. If we draw diagonal lines through a lot of these components, we can see that there is some semblance of you know, a relationship between the, the crown and the center pinion for the hands. So there is this great emphasis on that. And then the verticality of the lugs paired with the horizontal arm for the bridge attaching to the, the main string component, still, still pie. <laughs> I don't even know any more flippers. Uh, I, I do like how that's not mainspring. I'm, I'm saying the, the housing of the of the mainspring. So um, I don't know what the closed barrel is. Something I want to, I don't know that a closed barrel is something I want to see on the dial. You know, that's a good point, Deferon. Is it something that you'd like to see set up on the dial? I must say it gives it a, a modernity to it. It gives it a, a bit of a different look to your typical pieces. It doesn't feel as classical as most. Maybe that's down to the minimalism, the, the idea of going a more simplistic way with how the dial has been done, or maybe not. Um, but I do like the the gradual, sorry, the granular texture on the dial. That looks amazing. Uh, I kind of like this. I must say, to the to the design person in me, it does work. I do like that. <laughs> <laughs> June says the the barrel looks like a pizza cutter. You know, you know what? Should I pull up a pizza cutter just for just for laughs? Let's have a look. That's that's a that's a pretty good point you have going on there. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I've seen a pizza cutter look exactly. I mean, with with the two the two arms on either side. Yeah. You know what? You know what? <laughs> I think you're kind of close there. That is. Oh, that's a good jab. Is that from Julian? That's a good jab. This does kind of look like, so we, we call this the pizza cutter edition. I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah, I think this, this, I mean, you can fit most things into the golden ratio of Flip and Zipper, which is pretty crazy to think. Um, this definitely shares those. I love that balance. Nicely done. Uh, let's get out of this and have a look at, oh, that's pretty cool. Magic Mouse actually saved me here. Look at the detail everywhere. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's definitely not for everyone, though. Um, I'd be interested in knowing the price. Wow, what a simple movement they've used, too. I mean, this is this is what you get when you when you attach the um, the horology name to pieces. So you see this this level of restraint to the interior, and you can just see. I mean, the whole housing. Do you feel that's quite a deal breaker? I mean, you look at a lot of lungers today, like the Saxonia Thins and those examples. Lunger is pretty well known for for hiding their movements in these these huge bridges. <clears throat> I guess it's good for for the quality of the movement, the fact that nothing's moving around. But, I mean, we have another pizza cutter over here for the balance. Oh, no. How can we call this a pizza cutter? That's terrible. But you're not wrong. I mean, it's an interesting point. That's from Neil and from Julian. So, yeah, so Neferian says German three-quarter bridge. That's their jam. Great finishing, though. Beautiful finishing. I love the typeface used on the outside as well. But so much restraint. I guess in a way it's good that it's been reflected on both sides of the watch. You have a seriously minimalistic dial as well as... A highly minimalistic case back. Not for everyone's tastes, once again. We have a look at the price. Let's see. <clears throat> and my throat, oh, how's that? 13.9 Swiss francs. Limited to 25 pieces, this being a first edition. Yeah, so having a look at the components. I'm just going to mute myself and clear my throat quickly. Hold on a sec. Uh, how do I do that? Here. No, uh, here. Hold on a sec. <laughs> It's not good to cough into the microphone. Uh, let's see. So, so grain plate with off-central subdial for Mauer's minutes, everything else. Uh, interesting size. What is it? 33. No, this can't. Uh, they're talking about the movement is 33 mils. I got a bit of a fright. It's a 38 mil diameter watch. You know what? That's pretty small. 38 and a half mils for a watch of this kind. That's a pretty small size. You would expect it to be something like 41 with such a small uh, subdial on the other end. Who knows? Um Mark, welcome. <laughs> I blame my wife for being late. Mark, it's a pleasure having you here. Welcome to the show. We're, we're like, we're just over halfway through already, which is pretty mad to think. Um, so, so Brian says that the Bulgari Roma is genius. We chatted about it a second ago. That was actually the last watch in the, in the, present, the previous slide. Great looking piece. Um, I, I modified it again. If you missed it, I modified it a little bit, but I don't know if it went down very well. Anyway, let's move on to number 20. What's, what's it? Le 12. Okay. So the watch that everyone wants to chat about, the Antarctic Retropunt. So this was, I mean, what a standout watch. Just, I mean, we knew this was coming. It was like premiered because of only watch happening later in the year. They had released pre-renders of this piece before it actually launched. I mean, they had some, some hand sketches and everything, but they didn't have an official design for the watch out yet for everyone to see they just had some concepts to show so again mark welcome apologies for being very late you're not you're not that late what has it been an hour and a half it's all good it's all good great to have you here so let's chat about this machine uh, another beautiful thing about the show i mentioned at the beginning is that it's bringing all the attention to these outlier brands and designs and chapek is one name that is <clears throat> outlier very much an outlier i believe they only have like six well, three boutiques in the world something like that it's between three and six boutiques recently been re-established and i mean they they launched this just an, an amazing arrangement of components now dare i say i have some criticisms i don't know if everyone will like this i mean it's a beautiful watch the, the antarctic series i think we should just look at that for a second it's it's following the same um, arrangement as we're seeing with a lot of integrated bracelets like the Alpine Eagles, the, I mean, where do we go? The, the BR0, the BR05 from Bell & Ross. Of course, we have the Lunga Odysseus. We have the Nautilus. We have the Royal Oak. We have the pixelated image. Hold on a sec. We're going to find something better than that to look at. Uh, I want to look at the one with the 12 at the top. Oh, I do know blog to watch never loads their images properly. Beautiful movement. Look at this thing. So, so basically, 
Shapak is one of those watches out there. We've actually featured a couple of times on Wrist Shot Week in the past. And I cannot, for the life of me, find a good image to share. I mean, these will have to do. Double batons at the 12 are a bit on the nose. I think they look a lot better with the simple 12 at the top. Reminds me of the Zenith Defy. I mean, we can definitely, definitely discuss that for sure. So we have inter integrated case and bracelets. More examples, Girard, Perigo, Laureato. Um, I mean, the list is endless at this stage with integrated bracelets. But I think it's pretty amazing how they've managed to differentiate themselves here, create such amazing movements, as well as having a very interesting markup. No one knows much about Chapek as a brand. And to do this kind of stuff, it's seriously cool. Now, they have other pieces. They have more dress-oriented pieces. Their, their design languages, they focus a lot on these subdials being at the lower quadrant of the dial, which is amazing. I think it works so well for any watch out there. So the Retro Punch, should we have a vote on a yes or no? Because, I mean, the what they've managed to do here, which is so cool, is it's a skeletonized arrangement where the majority of the componentry, which should be at the back, is at the front. And that's commendable. But I have one gripe with this piece, which we can definitely chat about in a moment. It's to do with the movement. It's to do with the arrangement of everything. But I think just holistically as a whole, for a brand to premiere a movement, as well as just get all that attention. I mean, this was really the mainstay, the one that got all the attention on the show. I'm feeling alienated with your recent taste in watches. Waste again. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Reminds me of the Zenith Defy. Uh, Eric, welcome to the show. Don't worry, you're not late. Two subdials are very chapek. Yes, it is. It is. Skeleton dial. The designer was late with the dial submission, De Rosa. Okay, so now we can we can chat about it a bit. I'd like to know, should we have a yes or no? What are your thoughts on this watch? I'm not going to do a poll in the chat, or maybe let's try. Let's try. <laughs> let's see if it'll work. Uh, let's, if, it, if the show crashes, I won't do it again, but let's see what happens. I'm going to try and spell this right. Antarctic... Ratra punt question mark. This is going to be fun. See if I had someone on the outside doing this. So chap, I can't. I probably spelled that wrong. And uh, uh, hold on. I'm going to try and get this right. That is it. Yes or no? Ask the community and go. If this crashes the show, I do apologize, but we will we will stop doing it after that. Just wanted to see if the poll would work. So, what do you think of it as a whole? Just imagine that these watches were attainable. I mean, I mean, realistically, this is a test bed. This is a prototype. So it's not it's not something that's mainstream yet, but I think this is definitely one that has <laughs> caught the attention of the community for good reason. Uh, but there's one reservation I have, and I think the watch that you know, that immediately comes to mind, I actually chatted about this recently, is the um Richard Perigo. Uh, Laureato. Let's just see if I can get it right. Laureato. I can't. I can't spell to save my life today. Literally cannot spell to save my life today. Perigo. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Am I going to get there eventually? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Thank you. you know, this is what I. Oh, of course. Thank you, Google. You gave me the finger there. Give me a second. And as I'm waiting for the poll to come through, so. This will make a bit more sense in a second once we get something on the screen worth looking at. Uh, let's see, will this work? And this will work, okay. So, stunning movement, amazing complication. I saw, I saw Juan a second ago. Juan, thank you so much for the super chat. So it's great having you here. You're normally on Wrist Shot Week. It's awesome having you here this week. I hope you're doing well that side of the world. Uh, Truman saying too much Zenith for my taste, not a fan of open dials. Okay, so this, as much as I, absolutely ad ad admire and adore the, the way they've approached the, what am I saying? Approach the skeletonized dial. I've definitely run out of oxygen in the room. I'm going to open the window in a second. Having a look at the voting, let's see what I can do. I'll end the poll here. I don't know how many votes went in, but let's have a look at the result. <laughs> Rat pants. <laughs> uh, 73 math. Welcome to the show. Mason. Awesome having you here. Sorry for everyone that I'm missing. Toby talks cars. He likes this. It looks like an Ali X watch. <laughs> you save me with the next watch. Wasted again. So let's have a look at the percentages. So 62 and 37 from 45 votes. That's very interesting. Rancho Pun complication is amazing. The one reservation I have, and this is like, this is my like ridiculous design gripe. So please take this with a pinch of salt. The idea of having two column wheels sitting 
like this, one at the base and one at the top, I'm personally not a fan of. I find it to be, when, when you look at how the two subdials are done, it's a bit conflicting having it in the center like that. It juts out a lot. Now, it is highly polished, I should mention. Also notice how the majority of the movement is on the front. The rotor is at the back. Isn't it amazing? I mean, it's an automatic retropoint. It's such a cool movement. When you think of that technological prowess that it's managed to do. So notice, because it's highly polished, uh, you don't see it at an off angle. Uh, but the two column wheels, I don't know what it is. If it's OCD, if it's just I don't like how it cuts into the subdials, doesn't speak to me as much. Maybe if they were on completely different levels, like it looks like they are. I mean, you look to the top, the top is, is higher and the bottom one's lower. But that symmetry is a little bit conflicting to the brain, at least my brain. Uh, yours, yours may differ. But another thing to address, and this is also like completely outlandish as a comment, I find the arrangement of the dial to be a little bit all over the place. <laughs> Can you say that publicly? What I mean is that when we look at the Laureato skeleton, for example, one of my favorites, the way these bridges have been integrated into the, the arrangement of the dial, it looks much more, you know, should I say, we use the word considered again. It looks like it was thought through a bit more highly as to where the components would be placed and how the bridges could be integrated on top of it. Now, realistically, it's not necessary with this piece because the actual back of the watch, the dial of the watch is a part of the back. So technically, this is all a reinforced bridging arrangement. But I just find this a lot more endearing as if it was machined and attached like you would see the engine block of a car next to something that looks assembled in a bit of a jumbled way <laughs> user experience may differ i mean you know what that's it that's it this is all judging from images and renders so i mean take it with a huge pinch of salt but must say i, I think any retropunt chronograph gets big ups the fact that it's an automatic retropunt even bigger huge huge change okay getting back into the chat again mason says if they're going to do a skeleton black out the entire movement and subdials so the hands and markings can contrast properly. And that's another thing. They heat blued the hands to make them separate easier on the dial so you could read it. But I mean, it's still pretty difficult to read. I mean, you can't really tell the time easily. But, I, but again, this watch clearly, like most skeletons, are there to celebrate the, the complication, not so much the actual time telling and the use of it. Um, special though. And I believe there was also mentioned that Chapek will customize the way the hands are done, whatever the finishes, if it's fully red, if you want it silver, if you want it black and all this stuff. So you have a lot more opportunity. And of course, Monochrome did a nice extensive write-up on this piece and what it offers. Now for Only Watch, they're doing something even better, I believe. The theme for Only Watch this year is orange. And we were chatting about this on a, on a live show, the Hort Take a couple of days ago. Um, they're going to go fully brass, I believe, a fully brass movement. And it's going to be such a standout, I think. It'll really have great excitement next to it. So Eric says a little, I don't know, you're talking about the movements and all that stuff. Um, anyway, catching up with the chat. One out of 77, I believe these watches sold out very, very fast. But again, it's a test bed. It's a proof of concept. And, you know, Chapek is taking their technology to another level, which is always commendable. Beautifully done. Um, it's it's technical, highly technical, and it's you know it's a real sports car for the wrist. I must say, I dig the case. I, I like what they've done with the case, the polishing of the bezel, bracelet integration. Um, Jersey Ninja says, "I have to disagree. Love the Chapek Rat. It reminds me of a Crivia. Mm. Brings out the components, not a full see-through skeletonization. Yeah. So so that's that's my gripe. I don't necessarily I didn't necessarily want it to be a full see-through arrangement." I'm just thinking that if they did some kind of bridge work that had this more organic feel to it, it would it would look a bit different, but then might look a bit too highly technical. Still is amazing how they've been able to integrate the movement, the majority of the movement on the top, 42 and a half mil diameter. The price is all of 46,000 francs. So really easy to <laughs> swallow. Um, pretty amazing though. Brass movement in a steel case. I believe so, Flip and Zipper. Could be wrong. It might be all gold. But for Only Watch, they're doing some special release for it soon. Um, integrated bracelet looks like a North flag. You know what? That is such a good point from, from double AZ. You know what? That actually sums it up nicely. I like that. Great comment there. 
Um, I take it as limited. Yes, 73 Mafia is. Sorry that I'm missing you in the chat again. Um, I don't know that legibility is a factor. Okay, cool. I've caught up. Looks very nice, but price, yeah. So the question is, will this ever be a more attainable watch out there? Probably not. Retropan complications are very pricey, especially from in-house manufacturers and all of that stuff. But again, what I love is that you know, Chapex on the map. This was one of the outstanding outliers, whatever you want to say, this year, this launch. And they got all the attention, which is good. <laughs> Only 46,000. Well, I'll buy two. Yeah, exactly, Mason. Okay, so we're on to number 13 next. We've chatted about this watch enough. I didn't get this name right, but we'll try. The Maurice, uh, hold on, Maurice Jacquard. And it's called the Acon. I mean, the Icon. I always say Acon. Um, and it's a chronograph. I think I'll add chronograph on there too, and I'll probably get something good as a result. Maybe not. How many watches are produced from these brands? I have to ask. Anything? Novelties? No. Any discussions? I'm sure there was, hold on, introducing. No, that's 2020, oh, April. I'm going to have to look at the description. Hold on, checking out the crib notes. Uh, Chapek Antarctic. I just called it the, the icon. That's a problem. Okay, well, maybe I can pull up something on the main screen. No, they brought out a whole range of pieces too with integrated bracelets and just a standard time only reference. I don't know, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree completely here. Bear in mind that I threw all these together yesterday evening. So I might have missed a couple. Uh, what are we doing? This is bad. Bad presentation. Bad. I'm just going to say 2021 and maybe we'll be luckier. Anything? Bueller? Bueller? No. I recognize this. I believe this was a, a new launch and that was 2018. Nope. Nope. Missed the plot. Lost the plot. We see this watch pretty often in the past. Iconaut. Is that the... No, that's not the name. Come on. Is that really the name? Can't be. I'm going to put that in anywhere. I'm <laughs> pretty sure that's a Tudor reference. Uh, I'm going to try. No, definitely not. Um, okay, well, this is a problem. Bear in mind, because these releases are so recent, a lot of articles haven't reached the top of the search engine. Um, <laughs> James says, more shows like this, please. Unusual suspects. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's already through math. I had a feeling it was a Tudor reference. So, I mean, here's the watch on the left-hand side. I believe this was the new release. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't find it. You know, Google can only be so cooperative. Maybe if I type in Marissa Qua and then I type in monochrome, I'm sure I saw an article when I was looking up this watch a second ago. No, these are all the archives from back in the day. Beautiful gunmetal finish to that one. Uh, satin gray Tesla, new Speedmaster with Hesselite white dial. Oh, both on bracelet, but I would order a rubber band Seamaster. FYI, I'm a designer as well. Satin gray Tesla. Okay, I'm going to leave this here for a second, mute myself, open the window in the room because I am suffocating, and then I will get to your question, Satin gray. It's brilliant. Everyone in the chat, please answer this question. I like it. New Speedmaster with Hesselite or white dial Seamaster? Should we put a vote up? Yes, I think we should. So, Speedy or Seamaster, question mark, uh, why or no, uh, what should I say, uh, speed uh, or C, question mark. Let's get that poll going. I'm just going to mute myself, open a window because it's it's so hot in this room. I'll be back in a sec. Right, you know it's hot when the when the laptop has spooled up. It's going haywire. The side <laughs> gone deaf. <laughs> uh, if you can hear me now, so the laptop's going haywire, and the, the big screen is also starting to make a noise, and the coffee's gone cold, which is a bit strange. These are some cool looking pieces. Funny, we've just chatted about the Chapek similar aesthetic again. There are so many examples of the integrated bracelet cased model. Okay, so we got the voting going. I'm going to leave that going for a bit longer. Great question. That was a super chat I think I missed. Sorry about that. Um, Saturn Gray, thank you again for, for the super chat. Yes, it's a fantastic. Let's open up some slides and have a look briefly since we have it all available to us. So 3861 Speedy. Actually put in Speedy in the, in the search. I don't know if that'll be good enough. Uh, I'll say Speedmaster. 
No, so so those of you who might be new to the channel or new to to me, I am a diehard when it comes to Omega as a brand. I absolutely love it. Uh, some family history with the brand, my grandfather's watch, and um, just something I've always been drawn to. I, I love their designs. I'm I'm just such a fan. Um, when it comes to the Speedmaster, I'm not so much of a fan. I don't know why. It's a beautiful design. It's an icon, but as even though it has this instrumental feel, it's also like aesthetic um it's not as exciting for me i don't know why but a good point if we're talking about you know just off the cuff for me i would say go speedy 3861 new movements i don't think you'd ever regret it the seamaster is a bit of a marmite watch the professional line or should say marmite or vanilla depending on where you are in the world um again we've deviated away maurice you can sit in the corner we're gonna we'll get to you eventually <laughs> Um, I'll open up a separate tab and have a look at Seamaster White Dial. Uh, let's have a look what they come up with. I love, I mean, I, I called this watch the Great Whites. I absolutely love this watch, especially on the rubber strap. I think it works so nicely. Um, but when I think of the two side by side, if you want, it depends on you as a, as a watch person. Are you someone who wants timelessness or are you someone who wants a more modern feel, a more modern experience? Yeah, you've watched my videos on both. Oh, difficult, difficult. See, these were, these those videos were made in like different, completely different times of the, the journey for me, like two years ago and stuff. Yeah, so if you want something that has a modern flair and that has a lot of, you know, competency when we talk about durability, swimming, abuse, this is the one to go for, the white dial C, Speedmaster. Again, Seamaster. On the right-hand side of the screen, you're seeing what's going on here. Uh, the 3861 Hesalite traditional I think the coaxial caliber is a masterclass of work. Personally, I would be going for the Sapphire Sandwich variant because you get it open back. It is more pricey, but I think you're going to get a lot more bang. This is also the Hesalite variant. You get a lot more bang. I mean, I want to see an Applied Omega logo on the dial. Um, for me, that's that's like such a nice little added touch. And then also the, the clear case back. You want to enjoy the movements. Movement-wise, I think they're both stellar. They're both coaxials. Amazing work of art. But then you know, the, the dividing subject for both is the bracelets. Do you prefer the you know the more 80s-inspired element or do you prefer the more 90s-inspired element to the bracelet? Both of them have their pros and cons, and uh, it's, it's very difficult as a point, but we will not the first Omega in space. 73 math, that's a spanner in the works. And <laughs> you know what, given the choice, I'm just looking at his two options, but first Omega in space would probably be the one I would dive onto, given the choice in this arena too. We can jump on that in a second. Catching up with the chat, Seamaster Bracelet is kind of dated compared to the new speed. It is, it is. We could say we could say as well that the Speedy Bracelet is technically dated since it's based on more of an 80s example, but then it has more of a luxury quality to it, I think. It doesn't feel as heavy duty as the Seamaster does. Mm, difficult. Yeah, so my, my one pick, if I had to choose between the two, I love the idea, this is off Reddit, I love the idea of the Sapphire Sandwich because you get an applied logo. Uh, and you also get a, a clear movement to enjoy, which is what I think you should really appreciate. I know it's not the true enthusiast's variant of the Speedmaster, but then you want to see that movement winding when you wind the watch every day. And I like that. That's a really nice, like tangible, emotional feel there. Okay, carrying on. So there's mention, this is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I mean, so this is the critique that the Seamaster gets a lot, which is the helium valve and <clears throat> lots of pilot. There's, there's a lot less Okay, so we can say the safer option is going Speedmaster. The more outlandish option, which is more rugged, I would say a lot more competent when you're just, if you're someone who wants to abuse your watch, this one has it in spades. But then there's mention of the Aquaterra. That's a serious spanner in the works. And you know what? Yeah, I, I'm quite a big fan of that too. New Aquaterras, I know this, I mean, when I put this video out, God, it was there was lots of disinterest in this watch. This has seriously impressed me. I can't wait to get hands on with one of these. The subdial arrangement and all of that. What a cool watch. Honestly, what a cool watch. Draws on those those classic 50s aesthetics, but then has this modern style to it at the same time. New movement, quite you know, I, I really like it. So it's <laughs> so difficult. Let's have a look at I'll end the poll and let's have a look at the votes. Uh we'll have that look in a second. Seamaster equals 
<clears throat> Sean Astor equals Speedmaster somehow. <laughs> so let's carry on. I tried the 3861. We're talking about speed as in the drug speed. I got 72 votes, 62% Speedmaster, 37% Seamaster. Ooh. And that's it. It's um it's so difficult. A great question though. Really is a great question. And it's it's difficult. I mean, from 72 votes, I find that pretty interesting. That's that's two thirds of the votes for Speedmaster. You want to go classic, you go Speedmaster. I think you will never get tired of this watch, especially the latest one. Um, but then, uh, it's so hard. I can't do this. I can't spitball this stuff. This is fun. I like this. Aquaterra, no adjustable clasp. A good point. This watch, these both of these models do. The Seamaster has the superior clasp adjustment where this just has um, open holes to adjust with the, with the instrument. But look at that movement. I mean, you're getting, I, I believe you're getting a lot more bang per buck when you get this kind of movement at the back that you can appreciate. Mm. Okay. Are we going to chat about Maurice? I don't know. I can't find it, unfortunately. But um, Maurice, it was good while we had you here for a second. Uh, we're going to move on next to slide 14. This one's going to get some interesting debate. Uh, I'm just going to type in monochrome. So it's called the Doxa. Oh, God. Uh, it's 200, I think, the 200, no, sub 600T. That's enough. Let's have a look at this and chat about it because I think we all have a similar feel about this piece. Uh, some, I like this, but some really like this and some really don't. And I think it'll be worth exploring a bit as a, as a group. Getting back into the chat. Well, I miss you. <laughs> the Dream Master. That would be a good watch. Uh, and talk is cheaper. Hans, it is. It sure is. I know experience is what matters at the end of the day. My experience with Speedmasters, I've been very fortunate. I've I had a sit down in Burlington Arcade one day, and I got every single model out on the table from the original from 57 all the way through to the Ed White Transitionals, the last of the 321s, and all of them. I mean, God, the first Omega in space, what a charming watch that is. There's, there's so much you can appreciate in those, those areas. It's just never been a watch that has grabbed me as much as the classic Seamasters have. I don't know, personal preference. Um, let's chat about this little doxa. So a, a deviation, should we say, from their typical approach, how they attack their models with the, the cushion cases. And the buzzword that we're all chatting about is, uh, yes, it was. So it's called the icon, Thomas. I searched the, the Maurice Lacroix icon, Lacroix icon, and nothing came up, uh, nothing new, nothing like that chronograph. <clears throat> we were looking at it extensively. We didn't get a result. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> lots of us have, have coined this watch. I think Thomas and I both said it at the same time the other day, the Doxa Defy, because this case looks almost exactly like a Zenith Defy in the way it's got those, those chamfers at the end and stuff. Oh, it's the Sprint, Akon, CB, thank you. Should we go back to it or should we keep going? What's the time looking like? Almost two hours and we've got all of seven watches to cover. I think, I think we're okay. You got, you got a gist of the chrono. I'm sorry. I really, once I've done one, I want to just carry on to the next or else it's going to, you know, overlap itself. Uh, hitting the coffee again. I barely touched the coffee this evening. It's ice cold. Blue, blue, electric blue. So 1984. Eric, was this based on, hold on a sec. So this is actually a recreation. Angular shape from the 1980s, the sub. Now, of course, it's it's clear to understand that they probably would have jumped to those past influences again. And for that, it makes sense. The color of the watch, though, if you see between the, the render and the... Yeah, that's bright. Between the render and the actual watch in, in the flesh, what do you think of that electric blue? It's pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. I think what Doxa does so well with a lot of their pieces out there is have this royal blue finish, which looks amazing. Uh, should we go to Doxas now? Any more chat about the Speedmaster? I mean, I could chat about these for days. I want to do a stream soon about a similar subject that uh, would be good fun to talk about. Maybe it can be linked to Watch Report in one way or another, but I would like that communal discussion around you know, this series coming up. So has your, has your mind been changed? I'm interested in knowing. <laughs> uh, this was from, from Silver Tesla. Sorry, I missed your, your name. You were here a second ago and I've lost you. Um, yeah, I'm looking up at the chat and I can't find your name. Satin Gray Tesla, has your mind changed? Have you got? <laughs> have I just given you more questions to think about? So let's look at Doxa as a line. I love 
love featuring their watches um, and video presentations because they, they have such a unique design at this point, which is amazing to think. Uh, this being the sub 200, this is the more entry level, the more attainable example. And all of them have this liar lug cushion case aesthetic. And we can see next to it in contrast, how different the 80s style is. Very zenith, very, very zenith. Uh, what's, another, what's another example of the sub? I'll just put that in. The typical example that we often see, which is an absolute butte, is this very hard 70s cushion case, turtle case, whatever you'd want to call it. Amazing. The blue clashes with my, my leopard skin jumpsuit. <laughs> the suits a CQ as a stunning blue dial does. I mean, there are lots of options out there. This one immediately reminds me of um, Tudor Pelagos, I think. The Pelagos has a blue similar to this in a way. Uh, it's the color of my room. <laughs> I hate this doxa. Sorry, Megan says, yeah, I can understand. I mean, the 80s was a time of, same with the 70s, a time of seriously polarizing designs, to say the least. Uh, what can we say that works on this watch? The typeface, they always nail. The idea of separating it between two ends is great. I'll actually full screen this for us to enjoy. It's all titanium, which is something, and people are going quite wild for these watches, I believe. They, they sold a lot of them when it launched. The, the hardened edges, oh, magic mouse. The hardened edges, they look good. I think they do work. They, they definitely complement the case nicely. But on a Doxa, I don't know. I would expect to see Zenith with it with a design like this, personally, if we were to look at it at a further a further arrangement. Brooke Shields from Blue Lagoon, <laughs> Blue Star, love the 300T. Uh, time of cocaine, and thank you, Flippin. Thank you for that so much. I'm going to take a hit from the coffee again to get my brain restarted. So, yeah, 1980s. Megan mentioning in the chat, so many better. Have you finished your run, by the way, Megan? So many better brands like Trident, like um, ZRC, Aquadive, yeah. ZRC is an amazing, just such an outline, outlier piece. Um, Time and Tide Project Watch. Yes, I believe Time and Tide, they, they definitely had like, they were at the forefront of the launch of this piece when it was when it was done. Not this one, but Doxa as a brand. I remember they were like one of the first to put, here we go, partnership with Time and Tide. This was brilliant. Who mentioned this? Wristwatch Experience. Thank you so much for sharing that. 38 power, hours of power reserve, limited to 200 pieces. So that, that's it in a nutshell. Titanium case uses a Salita movement. It's it's almost 2,000 euros between 1,000 and 900. And yeah, it's it's not for everyone. It doesn't look like your typical doxes that we now know today, but it's good that they're deviating away. I think you have to be experimental or else you're not going to go far um, all over the world. Yeah, I'm trying to like avoid the... All the, the blatant, uh, sort of like, I just had to look through all the docs and models on their website. I'm sorry, I just don't like any of them. I'd rather go for a Zen. Fine, that's it. I think the main reason why docs get so much love is that Jacques Cousteau background and how it was a pioneer actually at its time with the Aqualungs and how it, how it worked in, in contrast with them and you know, the whole idea of scuba being the forefront of, of exploration and all of that works so well. These were so easily recognizable back then in the 70s because of those bright contrasting dials. Yeah, but the cr cr tiny crown, Mr. Mr. Ad I'm sorry, I'm not going to get your name right. Tiny crown, to say the least. Bit of a mushroom head, if you ask me. Not bad, though. I do, I mean, what they have done well is the, the orange accents. I think they've used it sparingly enough that you can appreciate the, let's have a look. Case back looks nice. They've used the orange accent sparingly enough that it's not too heavy-handed, if you know what I mean. It's it's easy enough to break away from. Um, so in that way, it works. If this watch didn't have orange accents, I don't think it would work anywhere near as well. Uh, but the contrast, love it or hate it. I mean, as Eric mentioned, 1980s. Uh, would look better if the crown was at the three. Hmm. I still think that this, this might have just been a pure recreation of an 80s model in a way. Uh, this docks might look better on an integrated bracelet. You know what? <laughs> when have we ever said that about a watch? I mean, it's like good good point there, Thomas. I mentioned about the Ploprof from Truman. Reminds me of a white and blue Ploprof, Smurfy-like. Yeah. Watch 6 though. Welcome to the show. We have been, we've been jamming for the last, what, almost two hours. Perfect for a University of Florida fan. These are their colors, I'm imagining. Um 
yes, the orange gives it some life. It does. If it wasn't for the orange, I don't think this watch would get anywhere near the same amount of attention. Um, they do have a heavy tool watch aesthetic, not for everyone. Zin, Zin is their is their competition. But then again, their prices, I believe Zin are like doubling their prices with a lot of their pieces today. So that's difficult. Um, I, this watch is nearly 2,000 euros. I think Zin's, depending on the model you go for, I mean, for me, I would love the EZM, given the example. But yeah, okay, we're going to carry on. Doxa, interesting machine. Definitely not for everyone. Debatable. I think the majority find it a bit peculiar. Come on. Why is this not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now we're going for the Oris Aquas, and it's the cleanup. Oh, God. What am I going to call this thing? Hold on. Let me find it. Aquas Upcycled. Okay. Now, lots of, lots of brands are doing this today where they are experimenting with alternative materials lots of lots of brands are attempting this of course plastic taken from the ocean Oris is not the first brand to be doing this stuff uh, but implementing that into their dials yeah i love it or hate it it's a bit a bit strange call it the jackson pollock call it whatever you like truth bruises guilty says ladies piece the ladies pieces look outstanding and here is the example here in the, on the left hand side you can actually read it and both of them give off this marble feel, you know. So it is literally a plastic dial. Yeah, we're not even joking here. This is a this is an actual, <laughs> actual fused together plastic dial. Yeah, definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Is this watch going to age well? You know, isn't that strange? You know, when you think of plastic, you think recycled, and you don't think of watches as disposable. But then you put those two concepts together and what kind of result do you get? Oh, it makes my head hurt a bit when you think of it that way. Like a watch is not disposable, but it's dealing with disposable materials and recycled materials that are, oh, I don't know. Looks like marble. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to catch up in the chat a bit more. Um, Mark, I don't know if you're still with us. Sorry, I miss you in the chat. Uh, proper job. Les, I think chatting about drilled holes, cut a bridge, talking about guitars now. Oh, deviating. Like it. <laughs> yes hans we do yes i'm not going to read that out loud uh plastic dial mm -hmm. it is gimmicky i mean another one similar to the the um the dials of the brightlings we saw earlier not for everyone are there any live shots they haven't shared many but that's the gist of it i would imagine it's using its new power reserve movement and all of those components it's using its its first like proper in-house made i think it's the caliber 4000 if i remember right and there have been a few examples. I th this is just a handful. The ladies' dials look completely different and so much better in comparison. Let's go back a page and see if I can find... Hold on. There are some good images we can use. Um, a blog to watch covered them in the flesh. Let's have a look. In the metal. Yeah, it's so strange. Like, we're seeing a lot of brands doing this, and they basically... I mean, look how cool the ladies' ones look. Um, you hear a lot of brands talking about how they are going for a greener initiative, but let's be honest. I mean, watchmaking in general, the use of just steel manufacturing by itself is not very ecological. There are lots of standards that these manufacturers have to abide by, and many are not following those laws and standards, which is quite something. But the idea of having a recycled dial and a watch, a watch that's not supposed to be considered disposable, it's, it's a weird paradigm. I don't know if it works. Call it a paradox. <laughs> At least the watch has the decency to look embarrassed. Oh, Eric, that's horrible. Not my cup of splash. No plastic <laughs> by, by movement period. Yeah, I mean, so what if they had a plastic housing around the movement? Maybe they could like double integrate the, the housing for the movement and the dial. I don't know. Flush it down. The <laughs> Depending on the pattern and the colors, it could have a camo look. Yeah. Also precedes the, the foe to clean up with Oris. Yeah. So... Playful, peculiar. Do we have any more live images of the watch? We do. Yeah, definitely not the most standout. Um, still head scratching for me. I don't. I don't fully understand it. I don't know how popular these will be. I don't think they'll be popular at all. Nice initiative, great concept. Lacks the punch though. Lacks the punch. Mechanical watches are inherently sustainable compared to the smartwatches. Very good point there from JBI. Watch Cardinal. Welcome to the show. Um. Oh, it's a pleasure having you here. You mentioned, um, shout out to Mark P. He explained the situation. Apologies. Uh, cheers. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining in, Watch Cardinal. Um, so with Oris, it is connected to the environment cleanup and ph philanthropy. 
the case back one worked better. <clears throat> They've done a few. And there's so many other brands out there that are doing this as well, like like Blancpain and yeah, uh, not for everyone. Sorry, I just blew into the microphone. Going to move across to another example that they just shared, which I think is much more relatable, and it's the Big Crown. Let's try and get this right. The Big Crown Pro Pilot, and it's for a rescue team, I think. Let's get this name up properly. The Rega Fleet, R-E-G-A. This one, on the other hand, a dinky introducing it. Let's look at monochrome again. This one looks way, way better. Much better. This is more our standard. So Swiss Alps, I would imagine search and rescue team. Uh, let's have a look. I did not do my homework before the show. Junior Johnson, thank you for the super chat, sir. It's good to have you. I know you're normally quite busy on the weekend, so it's awesome. Awesome having you here. <laughs> Dark Star saying my daughter would like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That is it. Um, watch the cast. Carrie Floyd says, I should have looked at that, right? That was dumb of me. Sorry. Uh, if I go back, I can just have a look quickly. Probably, but like a thousand, I'm going to say like a thousand, two hundred Swiss francs, 2,100 Swiss francs. Wow. That is quite a mouthful. That is quite a mouthful for a name. So they are using it. This is a Salita base. This is, I don't believe this is the in-house movement either. So there we go. Upcy so upcycled PET ocean plastic. PET is like pure poison. Um, each unique in color and pattern applied our markers with Superluminova with a Salita based movement for two grand. That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay, so let's chat about this pro pilot because this, I'm sure, would interest us a lot more. Now, funny, we were chatting about Zin a second ago. We look at this and we think Zin off the bat immediately. Uh, that's a lot. Two, three US is a lot. Um, Brightling may be up for sale again, JBI says. Do we have another Brightling to cover? I don't think so. We did look at one earlier. Panerai has also done something similar. Crazy. Okay, okay, okay. So let's chat about this for a second. So it's to do with a search and rescue team. I imagine Swiss Alps probably to save skiers who are trapped under the snow, maybe. Rega Fleet Limited Edition, 21 aircraft currently deployed, specialized organization. Uh, 20, 18 helicopters, let's see, airplanes, missions, private, non-profit organization, 13 bases throughout each country, 21, blah, 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 blah. Long description, search and rescue. Now, Zinn has done a similar example to this with the Easy M13 or the Easy M12, I believe, where it has similar arrangement of the whole pulsation dial setup. I, I really like how this has been done. The Pro, pro, pilot, pro, pro, pro pilot has done some good stuff. I think it's Collectively, it's been received very well. Um, and this watch, gunmetal gray, PVD coating, high matte finish, pulsation bezel on the outside, which is nice. I don't know if it can rotate. It looks like you have, is that a, that's a 24 hour dial. So you actually have a GMT complication attached to it, which is nice to add. You have a date, which is in black, which feels a lot better. Typical pro pilot aesthetics. You've got that fancy like modern crown. Fluting to the bezel, which looks great, similar to that original Pro Pilot when it was released. Do we have any more live shots of the watch? Ooh, that's nice. Uh, applied numbers. How cool is that for a change? Movement is hidden from view. I don't think anyone is complaining about that since most of these movements aren't that exciting to look at, but still, super impressive, I think, overall. This has to be one of my favorites. I know, I know the selection has been really out there today. Uh, definitely not watches for everyone, but I must say it does look good. Nicely done. Uh, well presented, I think. Well considered, all things. When you look at like <clears throat> how the date window is on the right-hand side here, the arrow pointing to it brings your attention to it. Um, yeah, just small the, the small details are what makes a watch like this. The, f the funky modern fluting on the bezels and on the crowns. The rubber strap also works nicely. Okay, taking it from the coffee and catching up. RS looks solid. I mean, they are when, when it comes to getting into this hobby, I think if you can buy them gray markets, I wouldn't recommend getting them new unless you can get some discounts, but they are such good value for money. They're such good fun to have. I still love my original 65, RS65. Also uses a Salita based caliber. Which WC is the right WC? Can you be a bit more specific, 73 math? I don't think I'm I'm that plastered enough. Try it on the oh. Tried on the 124270 today, me likey. I think everyone unanimously is liking the 36 mil. 
Yeah, catching up in the chat. So we're talking about Brightlings for sale. That's nice. So we just, we've just hit midnight, two hours of the show, and the chat is quiet. So it's good. We can listen in a bit more. Uh, discussing other specifics, painted to the lift system, additional red rubber strap. So hold on. It's a rubber strap exterior with a leather. Oh, no. Why did you do that? So it's got a leather underside and a, a rubber top. Hmm. Really? I don't believe that. It looks like it looks like it is. That's strange. Okay, well, that takes the durability of the watch and moves it in a bit of a different direction, don't you think? Easy to read the time. That's important, right? You'd be surprised. I mean, after looking at the skeletonized pieces earlier, it's it's good to see that you can actually read this pretty simply. Nice and easy. Yeah, so so this leather underside, that's a bummer. I, I'm actually surprised. It should have been full leather, full, full rubber at least. Specifications, 41 mils, gunmetal PVD, very good size. Matte black dial, large hour minutan, 24 scale. There's a lot going on here. Salita based movement again, <clears throat> 3,100 Swiss francs. Limited edition of 21 models. What? Each limited to 100 pieces. What does that mean? Limited edition of 21 models, each limited to two. So what is that? 2,100 pieces out there? I don't even know. Does each one have a different color or something? I, I, I don't know. Great bang per buck. Don't know about the price so much, but I think what they're offering here is, is quite solid. Um, oh, it has two different straps. Am I just looking at it wrong? Hold on. I don't know what I'm looking at here. For, I mean, these are two of the exact. Oh, they have different serials for the jets. One of 100 and one for the helicopter. Oh, I am, I'm so confused. Again, this is why I should do my homework. Here are the two. So one on a full leather, another on a rubber. Okay, makes more sense. Thank you for that. That was a mention from, from sorry, that was from Mr. Agid Days. I'm, I've got your name wrong again. Apologies. Different case backs. Yeah, yeah. Isn't the rubber additional? 21 different case backs. Okay, that makes sense. So the rubber on the leather straps are separate. You get both of the watch. I like it. 73 Math has put his name down for the... Um, I think he said for the Explorer 36. Great looking watch. I'm so looking forward. I hope to experience it one day, given the choice. Okay, so nice looking watch. Commendable. I think it's good. Uh, Justin, EDC, checking in. Good to have you here, sir. Vanilla scented rubber like they did on the Aquas. Beautiful. I mean, nothing better. I must say, a high quality rubber strap. Something difficult for things to come close. Okay, Moses Streamliner. Special calendar. Let's talk about this. Now, yeah, similar to the, um, do we have a nice hands-on blog to watch? Might have a good selection of images for us. 21 versions because of the case backs. Thank you. Coincide with different aircraft in the regular fleet. Thank you for that CB 2.0 and a few others. Um, okay, so Moses Streamliner Perpetual Calendar. This was another standout example. <clears throat> I need to clear my throat again. Hold on a sec. It's not good. I think Fisherman's Friends need to come into play soon. Moses Streamliner has been quite the outstanding example. It's had a lot more attention next to the, the Chapek that we saw uh, because of its release and you know the chronograph when it came out, I believe, was it last year or 2019? So this is the first time they've implemented the perpetual movement into this watch. And they've got some funky little adjustments they've done to it. Bracelet looks amazing. Yes, I agree, Rick. It is really cool. Uh, fluting on the rubber is nice. Rubber fat. Good point. Very good point. I, I had it. Do I still have it on the screen? No. Uh, no. Do I? <laughs> no. We've still got this, though. Uh, I'll move on to this again. So there's talk. I mean, I'm sure Eric would probably attest to this. Eric knows his stuff. That This bracelet, we call it the lobster tail bracelet today. But it's actually in line with something that you would see from Amigas in the in the eighties. I think that was one of the times when they implemented it with their professional models. Now, this is quite something. They have done some good stuff. There's one small issue that we can definitely talk about in a second, which I think could have been addressed a bit differently. I didn't have time to adjust it on the dial, but we, we are, I think it's pretty easy to see the elements. I there's an excellent hands-on review done by um, Watch Advisor the other day. Yeah, the lipstick hand. <laughs> we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, and Mark's saying, I was about to say, where are the fisherman's friends? They're in front of me. I'm trying to resist. I'm trying to resist. Tim, welcome. He's saying he doesn't like it. Should we have a vote? Let's have a vote on this watch. This should be fun. Um, I'm just going to abbreviate it. Moser, Streamliner, Perpetual, Calendar. <laughs> yes or no? 
Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to say yes, no. Let's have a vote, see what happens. I'm liking this poll. I think the polling thing is pretty exciting. Moses Streamline Perpetual Cabinet. Did I get that right? I think I did. It's it's a really cool example. I think what I love the most about it is how the date and the power reserve have been done. It's it's simplistic. It's out of the way. It's great to see it at this, you know, in between the four and the three and in this f funky zone, you can call it. Um, it doesn't go against any of the elements that Moses Streamliners are known for now. In fact, as the poll is going, I will pull up some examples of the streamliner as it is. And <clears throat> I can't get enough of the watch. I think it is super charming. Did a video this week about watch cases and this implemented with the whole cushion case aesthetic is something special. I don't know yet, Mason. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Hans, for that. Uh, yes, Mason says, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge streamliner fan. The collection, yeah. So, of course, the, the diehards would love this watch because it's a streamliner and because it's special. The dial is simple. You don't see this very often with perpetuals. I must say, this 40 millimeter green is spectacular. Given all the options in the world, I'm sure most of you would probably join in with me going for the funky blue chronograph. It's exciting. And Rick brings up a good point, saying it needs more color. You know what? I When I saw this watch being hands-on reviewed by Watch Advisor, you know, Ed Eduard saying he didn't want to go against the originality of the streamliner gray finish. But in fact, I think this watch, if it was, you know, brought out with a, you know, here's an example. I'll pull up a, is it the Endeavor? I think it is. The Moser Endeavor Red. Uh, let's see. I'm sure, it's an Endeavor. Yeah. Now, just for a second, just close your eyes and imagine for a second that this finish of dial debuted on a perpetual calendar streamliner. Something tells me it would have such a such an impact next to just a standard gray finish. Now, look, if I'm if I'm thinking from a manufacturing point of view, they could just be using the original dials that they had with the first gen of the streamliner, the chronograph they brought out originally. But just imagine the impact that a red dial would have. I, you know, everything is a derivative. <laughs> I mean, that's talk about existentialism and all of that stuff i love it i love it the funky blue is just absolutely incredible as a design of course it's not going to load up for me this to me just speaks the, the, the streamliner chrono is just cut above omega mark ii vibe yes okay catching up in the chat again the blue chrono is the bomb probably looks better in real life it does yeah so i'm seeing it in the light it does look that the bracelet color alone is stunning don't forget the loom date megan says i'm sure we're going to get some examples of that now if i pull it up again no not the oris so the the one small small gripe that I have with this watch is the, is the there's the little um, red rocket at the base here. Now we know that Mosa does this with their pieces. We've seen it with similar to I think same in the Endeavor line. God, that red dial is something else. Just imagine that finish on a watch like this on the left. I think it would be such a standout. Don't take me to the web page. Let's have a look at just standard. I think it's the Endeavor Perpetual. One amazing thing that was discussed, uh, yes, so here is an example here. Notice the little, tiny little arrow hand they normally have. I really appreciate this. I think it works so well for this aesthetic. And in fact, I think it would work excessively well on this example instead of the little, I've got to close this. I can't stand looking at these things. Um, instead of this little, this little hand. Now look, it matches the cricket bat styled hands but it also looks funky. I think if they had a little arrowhead instead on the dial, it would would add something to it. Uh, okay, catching up in the chat, and there's some other cool things to chat about, like the perpetual calendar itself is a masterclass. This was emphasized a lot by Eduard when he reviewed this thing because the 28th of February, normally it takes six hours to cycle through that date when you're changing, you know, when you're adjusting for loop years and stuff. Because it's a perpetual, you don't have to do that in, in any case. But between the 28 and 1, when you go through February, it's right on the hour. It changes across. It skips all those days immediately. And that is superior watchmaking. It's it's a super hardy, robust machine. And I think that's worth looking at. As well as things like the dates loomed, as Megan mentioned. I mean, having a loomed date is so quirky, cool. It's, it's typical of Moser and what they do very often. I haven't even ended this poll. Hold on a sec. Let me do that. 70% yes by the looks of things. Uh, Moses Swiss Mad Red is fire. It's so good. It is so good. So just, just that would be the first thing. If I had 
the ability of being able to speak to our man, Edward, I would say, make it in red. And I think people would go like mad for the watch. Absolutely mad. These are also really cool. And you can see the arrangements exactly the same, really, but then it's not a, it's not a sub seconds. So the watchmaking behind these pieces, I mean, this is definitely one of the standouts of the show by far. Power reserves nicely done. <clears throat> Catching up with the chat again that I've been missing. Sorry, everyone. I get a bit um, carried away in these descriptions. Uh, let's see. Carrie's laughing. I think when I mentioned Red Rocket. Insta Blaine, welcome. You were here a second ago. I love that, Moza. I think the Streamliner collection is pretty cool development in the overall watch lineup. It is. It's exciting. It's different. It's what Moza tends to do very often. It's not afraid to be out there and to go against the typical brief that we see so often with integrated bracelets and stuff. Just the case design and bracelet alone is masterful. So 70 to 29. How does that work? 30 says 37 votes, 70% and 29. So where's the other 1%? Was the was the 1% like indecisive? I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. So another thing to mention are the markers. I think Rick mentioned the markers on the dial a little bit off, the, the one to five, the highly accented, <clears throat> something you would see more on a racing dial and not so much a standard time only, time and date. Oh, this is just amazing. The movements, the fact that you can see the leap here at the back, it's out of the way. It's superb. Eric is predicting the end of the show already. You're a legend. So what are you talking, what, 12.57? I don't know. Maybe I'll beat you to it. We'll see. Uh, the whole marking, all the stuff they do. I mean, it's it's a masterclass. Again, Moser is getting the limelight because of what they've done here. There was lots of expectation for this watch too, which is great. And I think they delivered. They delivered very well. But again, I think I might do a mock-up. Put this in red. It would stand out. It would make a big move. Of course, you'd have to do a few adjustments to the hands and things like the red rocket you'd have to change. That's the one gripe I have, really. That tiny little hand at the bottom there. I know it's it's supposed to be out of the way, but it does also feel out of place in a sense, which is, which is funny. Pull out their mosaic dial. Oh, yes, for sure. That's this is from Loose Tooth. I like your name. Uh, let's see. Mosa mosaic. That's a beautiful example. I love it. I mean, they had that Tiger's Eye variant that they did a while back. I mean, look at that. I don't think any other brand out there is as diverse and experimental with their dials. Um, of course, that Tiger's Eye Tourbillon that they launched earlier was something special to enjoy. Uh, I love that we don't all agree, Mark says. <laughs> have, have you guys been chatting about the watch? I've been missing it. Um, it's, a different, it's a different streamline, a cheapest perpetual calendar watch in the market right now. Good point from Megan. So let's actually look at the price. I haven't gone that far. We've just been browsing, perusing all the pictures. $54.50, I'd imagine US dollars for this. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but then that's like the price of a Daytona on the gray market. So, I mean, what do you want? <laughs> this is an enthusiast watch next to your typical just chronograph element here. It's a perpetual calendar. It's It makes for a great daily piece, and it's one that will always start a conversation too, which is what I think a lot of us enthusiasts want to bring up. Uh, that, that indicator is just what they could have done. I mean, I've, I've said this, I chatted about it on the Hort Take a couple of days ago, live show. Extend the length of the hand a little bit. Maybe look at Zodiac as an inspiration, a squared hand instead of this little this little pointed tip on the end. But then it goes against the hand aesthetic that it already has. Maybe they could have implemented the aesthetic that they've used with the seconds hand, which has, uh, this is a good example on the left, some taper to it instead of just being a little stub. You know, very finely pointed instead, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Still interesting, and it's great that Moza continues to remain ambitious with their approaches. That is it. Okay, carrying on to number 18. What is up next? Another crazy, funky machine. Let's see. So it's the Ferdinand. Hopefully I saved this. No, it wasn't saved. Ferdinand Bertro, I'm going to say. And I did have the name up the other day. I think it's, it's an early generation piece. Oh my goodness. I'll just put up the reference. So it's the FB. Oh my. FB 1.6-3. Oh, it's a mouthful. So we are coming close to the end of the show. We have a few other nice surprises. Um, but this, uh, we are closing up with a bit more horterology to end off. This is another serious outlier. I mean, whoever chats about this brand and it's and what it does. So this is an octagonal case. We've actually, let's see if I can full screen it for us. Should we look at the specs of this watch? 
very expensive, very different to to usual uh, pieces you look at. New poll, ooh, Mason, what's that? So you say Moses Streamline and Perpetual or Daytona? You reckon? No, 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 no. This is this is going to be more fun. Um, this is a good good shot. Moses Streamliner uh, or Daytona? Okay, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Uh, Moses Streamliner F B or Daytona. Let's see. Ask the community. So we're going to choose between the Funky Blue Streamliner or the Daytona. Which would you go after? I think that's a bit more fair because, I mean, how can you not like this thing? Now, this is going to be good because you're going to have some who love the Daytona for obvious reasons, and then you're going to have some who want the outlandish stuff. If it was me, I would go for this every day of the week. Uh, the Daytona has never been a watch that's really appealed to me. And this thing speaks to the designer and me a lot more, I think. It's just, oh, it's standout. And when I say Daytona, I mean the ceramics. We could say the Panda or the, or the Black Black variant. It should be interesting. So if we chat about this, this Ferdinand Bertrand, completely butchering his names, um, resuscitated by Chopard's Carl Friedrich, um, these names. Remember, I'm not from Europe. I know a bit of Dutch, but that's about it. Uh, pays tribute to Ferdinand Bertrand's horological legacy by offering exceptional timepieces. The Oscars of watchmaking. So it did get an award, which is pretty cool. I think this, this maker, Art in Time. It's a fascinating case. I must say, this whole octagonal approach, we were chatting about Bulgaria earlier on, and similar kind of way how the, the cases have these outlandish flares to them, speaks to a certain time period like the 30s and all of that. Uh, okay, carrying on in the chat. I like the Rolex Sky Dweller month indicators. You know, that's one thing that Rolex has absolutely nailed, standout result, is how they have done that calendar complication. Um, they were the first to actually experiment with it, I believe. I mean, before Mosa and other brands started using the 12 indicators on their dials as, as far as um, marking the, the dates, I think the Sky Dweller was one of the first, which is special. Um, very good poll. I think this was from Mason. I like it. So Megan says at 49, uh, hold on a sec, 49, uh, no, the chat just jumped, 4,900 for the perpetual calendar with a watch with a high-end horology. Don't think you can buy better. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. 12 to <laughs> Hans and, and Eric are still at it. Um, I McDig this uh, and the normal Ferdinand's. Okay, carry on. Funky Cold Moderna. So so um, Megan, I mentioned the, the Funky Blue. I'm talking about the, the Streamliner Chronograph as a comparison between that and the Daytona. So would you rather go for Streamliner Chrono or Daytona? I th it'll be interesting to see that in result. I'll leave the poll going for a bit longer. It was a pleasure, John. Thank you so much for being here. I know you've just been listening in the background. It's great. Absolutely great having you. Been running for two hours, 15. I think this will cap off by about three hours. Um, what we have three more pieces left, basically, and then we're done. Um, the big Grabowski. Oh, Reed's in us. Oh, awesome. Reed, welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, Daytona is great, but that Moser is another level. And that's the question. Do you want a watch that looks, you know, like everyone else's, or do you want something that is just a, a complete difference, mile above? So Andres says, God bless all watchmakers and creatives. Difficult, right? Difficult for them to push these things out. So this is called the chronometer of FB 1.6-3. That's quite a mouthful. Unique piece, like other art and time pieces. Uh, what is amazing about this watch is that that central balance they've done with the movement working, open work arrangement here, central chronograph, not sorry, central running seconds, I should say, power reserve on the left-hand side, and you have a tiny, teeny, tiny little dial, <laughs> dial to read the time. Difficult, difficult to break through. It's a 44-millimeter case, so that's something to pay attention to. So this is the gripe that a lot of us can probably have. A lot of the time we see these horterology pieces, and we end up not being able to read the time on them because their dials are so small. And this is probably another example of that. You really have to squint. Just for scale's sake, I'm going to use my arm for scale. <laughs> Stare at the screen. Like, like that's 44 mils. If you're looking at the cap, I mean, you can, you can barely read that, you know? It's tiny. Are you buying this watch to tell the time? I don't know so much. Uh, I don't think I got the scale that... <laughs> I definitely didn't get the scale right on, this, on that end for you guys. But it's small. It is really small. You have to squint. I like the Streamliner Chrono, but not other versions. Yeah, Streamliner Chrono is great. Should we look at the poll? Oh, it's quite close, you know. Um, 49 votes, 63-37. I'm impressed. 
Like it's it's pretty well balanced, all things. Uh, keep going. I'm going to leave the poll up for a little bit longer. I would like to see what the result is between the two. So what else to discuss about this piece? I think it uses a DLC coating case, or maybe it's forged carbon. I don't know. We'll have to probably look at the specs in a moment. The movement is world-class. Oh, of course, it's a fusé. Fusé chain. This is insane. I rhymed that. How cool is that? So fusé and chain is something you don't see very often. It's it's such an old-school method of watchmaking, and this is why they got that um, appreciation, especially for, for GPHG, those awards. Um, it takes so much work to make these chains. These chains, I, I believe they're like three meters long in actual length. That's, that's how small they are. Just made to help regulate the movement, basically, to help the, the constant escapement, as they say, constant force. Um, nicely done. Beautiful arrangement. I like how simplistic this dial is. It doesn't feel excessive at all. We've looked at simplistic arrangements um, before. I mean, earlier we looked at that Armin Strong, Strom, sorry. Here is something that is simplistic, but also just it's great how it emphasizes the stuff you want to see. Like this is probably a ratchet. So when you're winding it, you'll see that little ratcheting arm moving along there. Of course, when it's when it's actually working, you see that chain being wound up. You've got the open work balance that you can appreciate there. It's it is pretty stunning. Still outlandish. I mean, you could put it in the same park as the as the work when it comes to technicality and all of that there. Oh, just incredible though incredible piece unique so i'm guessing this is <clears throat> one of one <laughs> don't tell me this is the only watch they made i think it was i think it was okay i'm going to end the poll 51 votes 63 to 37 i do like those perspectives very very interesting fleetwood mac <laughs> uh what if it was ice blue platinum daytona mm. <clears throat> are we talking same prices then yeah, Truman, that's something more, that's something worth looking at then. Should I actually pull one up just for just for fun? So there's the streamliner, funky blue, absolute masterclass of fun. And then we have the Daytona and it's platinum, if I remember right. It's platinum with the brown bezel. Hopefully it gives me the one I'm looking for. Yes. Difficult. Do you want the baguette dial from, from Watchbox or do you just want, I mean, here's her dinky with the 50th. This is an interesting debate when you look at these two. You've got stainless steel here. You've got platinum. They're completely different price categories, I believe. Or maybe maybe they're quite close. I don't know. Interesting, though. I see JCB is joining us. Welcome, sir. Uh, yeah, we're just we're just rolling through, chatting about all these bizarre monsters. Um, crazy thing. So this being a piece unique, um, what was the price? Two, 200. Yeah, easy enough. You notice that these shows had a constant arrangement of prices. The, the prices were all pretty hectic to say the least uh tone lock solid i think he uses endorses the same lozenges as me <laughs> insta blade yeah i mean gotta love fisherman's friend okay we've chatted about this enough should i have a look at the case they mentioned it's dlc steel really dlc steel case for 200 what is happening i mean the steel the steel watch today is just getting so out there it's outlandish just beyond belief don't you think 50th anniversary Daytona is nice, but 100K plus for the ice blue. Yeah, that's the problem. And is, is that retail or is that gray market, Megan? I really don't know, but that's fascinating. Uh, okay, so we're going to carry on through to 19. What did I share for 19? Uh, let's see. Arnold and Son. Okay, now we are definitely clutching at straws here, I think. Um, and it's the world, world timer, I believe. I believe. Now they've they've the globe trotter. They've done a couple of these before, I think. Um, quite a lot of these before. Globe trotter and stainless. Okay, so that's the big. Thing. I mean, brilliant, brilliant timing. Actually, just chatting about what is going on with the world and stainless steel. And here we have an example now of a watch that is debuting in stainless steel, and people are going mad for, which is a mind blow. I just don't get it. Uh, a dinky shop thank you so yeah i mean what can we say it's a, it's a stunning watch i think the what makes this watch so great as a world timer is that it's got that realism factor to it it's three-dimensional nuclear movement <laughs> it's three-dimensional it's all out there in display you've got this beautiful dome i love that that logo by the way nice crest they've done there so lots of little elements to enjoy i don't think they have any live images of the piece but uh yeah the thing that makes it special is it's stainless steel and 
the, the price of stainless steel watches today. It's just, it's a mad world, as Al says, talking about a world timer here. Yeah, would you call it? You wouldn't call it a world timer. It's the globe trot. I mean, it's a GMT, right? No, it's just basically following the rotation of the earth, depending on where you are, I guess. So it is technically a world timer, but not really. Um, taking it from the coffee again. It's a beautiful watch. I love the characters that it has. The, f the fact that it's all there on display, it's, 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 it feels like real life, you know? I mean, I also see a Southern Hemisphere dial as well as Northern Hemisphere. So one interesting trend in recent years has been the increasing use of Superluminova for decorative effects. Holy smokes. Now, I really like that. That is a difficult... So that's how you tell the time. So you got eight, and then you have to just sort of judge 8.50. I don't know. But how cool is that? I did not know this was a thing. That's amazing. Okay, just carrying on reading. Beauvais, of course. Beauvais actually released a watch that I missed for the show. Um, some pretty clear material, stable, reliability, luminous. Yeah. <clears throat> if you like astronomical complications, you can get it all here. And they talk about prices. 18, 17, 9 for this watch. I love this. This is quite something. Okay, catching up in the chat. Retail. Uh, as it is, platinum gray market, 165. Oh, Megan, thanks for that. That is, um, that's a bit of pill to swallow. Suspension on my truck has better steel. <laughs> oh, geez, you guys are the worst. You are the worst. Um, oh, and speaking of clowns, Dark Star, we're going to have a look at the um, the Chaken in a second. Hurrah, just saved 212 Swiss francs by not buying the Ferdinand Boutreau. <laughs> Uh, it's great. It's so good having you all here, really. It's so great. And JCB's leaving us. Have a great breakfast that side of the world. Oh, I've got to clear my throat again. Hold on a sec. It's not happening. It's not happening tonight. I think it might be the coffee. Maybe it's the Peruvian blend. Don't know. I really don't know what it is. So look, it's not the most exciting watch. It's it's very restrained, which is nice. Uh, they don't even show you the movement of the piece, which is strange. Um, I don't even know what caliber they use. Should we have a look quickly as we move on to the next? Um, Le Jeu Pere, okay. Uh, Citizen Group caliber, and it's and it's an Arnold and Son caliber automatic, twenty nine joule. Hmm, twenty eight thousand eight hundred. I'd be interested in knowing what this is about if it's if it's on a certain base caliber that I haven't covered before. Super nice though, I must say. Stylish, fun, and it's good to just chat about these watches again. These these outlandish, strange. I'm, I've used outlandish way too much on the show. <laughs> Ron says this watch should be at least 400. Ron, good to have you here, sir. It's always a pleasure having you here, Ron. Yeah, you've missed some some good banter around pieces earlier, Ron. Um, so Megan says, Mum has the the Alangan, Alang I see I see ANS and I think Alangan Zona. So Arnold and Son Globetrotter, precious metal, um, MSRP 14, great watch. You had it. I did feature on Wrist Shot Week. You know, it's, isn't it sad that I've there've been like thirty of those shows, and it's gotten to a point now where nothing surprises me because we've seen like everything, and it's it's crazy. What time is it exactly, Hans? Uh, Megan, thank you for that that comment there. And uh, yeah, so you've actually come in at a good time, Ron, because we're looking we're looking at the Shaken, uh, and it's called the Minotaur, I believe, right? The Shaken Minotaur. Yeah, why not? I mean, this is now getting just bombastic. Let's let's enjoy it. So shaken watchmaking is awesome. The, the the designs are definitely not for everyone, but you know what? You know what? Watches are fun, and <laughs> I don't think this, this is not the best variant of the models they've done in the past. Uh, I don't even know what the case material is. We can chat about it in a second, uh, Mister Fantastic. They've done they've done Joker dials. They've done um, clown faces. They've done like Halloween out outfits. It's so cool. I really enjoy that level of fun. Look at the movement making. The Minotaur. There was some great. Oh, I see what they've done here. Okay, so we have we have Greek inspired elements everywhere. Right, makes sense. Minotaur being this this Greek um, ancient Greek piece of mythology, you're using elements that remind you of that. Um, that's pretty cool. You got some runes there at the base. The numerals look semi Greekish, we could say. Not really, but kind of with those jagged lines and edges. Yeah, that's fun. It's just fun and just bizarre, you know. Shaken's Joker watches is a classic. This one, oh god, those eyes though. And of course, you have the motif when you look at the inside of the eyes. I don't know if you can see it. Zoom in on the left. You have those um, typical arrangements you would see on their pottery and stuff. This is a motif that they used on a lot of their 
their designs back in the day, similar to the dial. And <laughs> I'm just getting, I'm just understanding this watch now as I'm looking at it. So you have the big eyes, you have the nose, the nostrils, <laughs> then you have the actual bridge of the forehead and the nose here. So you, it makes sense now if you squint your eyes and see it, big eyes, I guess the ears are sort of like two crowns and the horns are at the top. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's just so it's just so funny. It didn't make sense to me at first because I didn't I didn't see the the snout and how it integrated with <laughs> I'm gonna catch up in the chat. Rolex is the mega boss. Okay, let's just scroll up a little bit. Yeah, carry Floyd. It's good, right? Nothing's shocking. <laughs> um Taylor Taylor says Jaeger's um or extreme world alarm does the world timer. Yes, long name. It does a world timer right along with the usable function. JLC. Just class act, absolute class act. This is fun. I'm really enjoying this. It's not the one I would go for. Should, should we just open up a, a tab and look at Shaken in general and just see what they offer? The Joker has definitely been the one that everyone goes mad for. Uh, the Mars watch, they've done some good stuff. We actually chatted about it on the show a while back. Look, I mean, the, the Joker is the one that we all chat about. It's definitely one of the coolest with that whole tongue arrangement there. I mean, it's just, this is very cool. I didn't notice they had this at the case back. This is probably for a special edition. And then they had like jack-o'-lanterns and Halloween editions and stuff. I mean, yeah, this is just beyond, <laughs> beyond ridiculous and bizarre. Minotaur, name was Asteron. How dull is that? What? Minotaur's name was Asterion. Are we talking like actual translation? Technically, it's a regulator. Yes, I'm a smoke. I don't know what's going on in the chat. Minotaur, a third man, a third bull, a third, <laughs> a third ETA movement. Philip, that is so good. I believe it is an ETA-based caliber. They have two ETA-based calibers stacked on top. I mean, this is from ages ago. I'm probably spitballing. Um, two ETA-based calibers stacked on top of each other that, that get this result. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't even know what the F and R does on the dial. Let's try and discover that. Um, let's see. Like the Joker watches, the Minotaur is going to have crazy eyes. Oh, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, carrying on through, at times, the wrist mon. That's what they, like the wrist monster, yeah. Between 18K is the, the price. I love how they don't give us the specs. Come on, Hodinky, give us some more stuff. The problem is they force you to read the, the, the whole write-up. Here we go. Step up from ETA base calibers. The movement is a step up from the earlier Jokers. This time they're using a voucher. Okay, so it's just like we chatted about earlier with the... um with Hermes brands and other examples they've actually moved up their caliber now that's interesting the mouse king 2020 watch the bezel is engraved with letters to spell out minotaur uh it's just it's just so much the the bull of minos now we've got this whole crete philosophy and stuff going on in the background i don't know <laughs> absolutely love that green one nobody nobody like bull milk uh that is that is that is disgusting flip and zipper that is i can't believe i actually read that that is disgusting thank you it's always good to have a touch of class on these shows. There's like a mouse dial. I mean, like, where do you even start? Now, the question, I actually, hold on. Um, I want to get a good image up for us to chat about, and I'll put a poll in the chat one more time. Okay, that's cool. What the hell is that? One more poll, I think, for fun. Um, would you wear a shaken question mark? I hope I spelled that right. Y N. Ask the community. I would like to know for you out there. I would most definitely wear one of these things. It's um, you know, it takes the watch enthusiast thing to another level. <laughs> um, F and R is weekday. Oh, thank you for that, Mason. That's interesting. So that's how they have the weekday complication in the front. And as far as the date goes, they don't offer that. Hmm. Okay, I'm just checking what it says. Uh, imagine having a full set of the, the shakens. Yeah, it'd be great having a set of toy farm <laughs> farm animals for your wrist. I love that uh, for fun. So yeah, I've put the poll in the chat. I'm very interested in knowing. The question is why, Hans says, exactly. It's like, <clears throat> you, it, it's these watches, actually, it works so nicely into how we began the show, which was, I mean, here's an example, Rolex Forums, Shaken versus Batman. Like, this is a cool two-watch collection, don't you think? Where yes, buy no. <laughs> Party fees for sure. It's taking the watch enthusiasm to another level. It's injecting fun back into the hobby a bit more. It's not serious. The problem is we're seeing so many staunch, just sterile, just you know, excellently addressed pieces that don't 
expand and, and act like a bit more of an entertaining example. I think that's what Shaken manages to do. I can't, this, this dial, just, I don't know so much. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> I much prefer the Joker dial or something. Um, so I think this is also pretty cool. What it does is just inject that bit of fun and exuberance. That dial, that eye looks almost real. That's freaking creepy. Um, we were chatting about the Mickey Mouse watch at the beginning of the show. 300 from China. <laughs> Let's say apparently they do make replicas of these pieces. Yeah. Um, like the Mickey Mouse watch at the beginning, the, the power. So technically, this is also a jump hour in a sense, right? It has that power matic arrangement to it. Unique. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to add, add some of these to my collection. I like this. So we have it. How cool is this? The poll 35 votes. It's right down the middle, man. Keep on voting. I'm interested. Would you wear a shaken, shaken watch? Yeah. I like this. This is good fun. This is the, I'm guessing, the Dracula version. I don't know. It's just it's just too much. It would be so much fun to wear. I'd love it. What I must commend them on, and I know I'm, I'm sticking on this for a bit too long, what I, what I love about it is the fact that they've just used their colors so well. There are so many complementary colors that they managed to blend in. I mean, Greek, you've got this bronze feel immediately. That's like the inspiration they went for in the first place. Halloween, I don't know. You've got some gold. You've got some green. It definitely looks pretty trippy i love these eyes that's something cool yeah the designer in me enjoys it because it's not something that we can take seriously but at the same time it's just fun fun and just ridiculous at the same time i mean if it's enough to make your kid smile why wouldn't you get it you know so end result end of the poll the majority is a no by 53 <laughs> percent i love it strap monster that's it <laughs> Is it there? Uh, Thomas. Oh, thank you, Thomas. He said, shout out to the main man, Bushard Buddha, and the friends, Flippin' Zippo, Junior Johnson, Hansi, JCB, Mark, 73, Maff, Megan, Eric, Ron, Mason, Rick, Rem, and all the others out there. It's so good having you. Thomas, thank you for the super chat, sir. It's been it's been a fun one. Like Again, this show is so derivative next to what we normally do, which is much more structured and stuff, but uh, what a great conversation for someone. Yeah. For someone who doesn't get watches, I love them. That's, I mean, that's it. I think the the beauty of this hobby is not to just impress people with what you have, but then it's also to just, I mean, I've had more engaging conversations with people who are not watch people than the enthusiasts half the time because they just don't understand it. They don't get it. And to get into their heads and try and break through why they don't understand it so much and all that makes a big difference. And, you know, with something like this to break the ice, I mean, they probably think you, you're you a nutcase wearing a watch like this. <laughs> but I mean, that's the joy. Uh, Thomas, again, thank you. For everyone who's been supporting me and the show, I can't thank you all enough. I think I need to do like a personal video out there just to thank you all for, for what you do, supporting what I do, what I try to do on the page at least. Um, and to Blue Shirt Buddha. I don't know if you're still with us, Blue Shirt, but I'm going to send you a message after this weekend, I promise. I really hope you're taking care of yourself, putting your feet up. Nightmare on Watch Street from Andreas. I haven't seen you earlier. Better alignment than a Seiko Les on the... I love it. I love it. God, that's funny. Okay, we got to carry on. We're almost done, I think. This is the last or the second last. I don't know. Come on, work with me. Oh, okay. Okay, this is going to be divisive. Parmigiani Floria Tonda PF collection. Now, I really like this watch. We were chatting about fluted bezels and stuff at one stage earlier in the show, I think. <laughs> Instablan, no, honestly, it's I love doing these things. The the chat is always such good fun. And what I loved about this is it didn't take much preparation to do. A lot of the time, I mean, when it comes to making videos and stuff, that's that's a week's worth of work, getting the recording done, getting the edit of the recording, getting the images together, the sources and references. If it's a if it's an actual review, then it's the videography and the <laughs> Uh, just all the, the cropping of the images together and stuff takes way too much time. So these shows are a little bit less, more sporadic, which makes for good talk. Now, this is just a cropped image that I took from here because it's been difficult to source images. Parmigiani is a brand, another one similar to the ones we've looked at earlier, Shaken and, and Chapek and all these makers that don't get the, the attention and love that I think they, they deserve. But then again... I think this is a beautiful watch and there's going to be lots of criticism here because it's it's a very expensive piece. Uh, but I want to chat about this for a second because I think it's quite a nice breakthrough 
in this area. If it ain't fun, it ain't worth it. And zipper, that's exactly it. That is exactly it. Uh, when you tell them it was $20,000, <laughs> then they'll think you're nuts. Rick, that is exactly it. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, carrying on. Carrie, oh man, thank you. Really, thank you for the super chat. All of you here, please, please just the last like five minutes, just sit back and enjoy. I don't know what's going to happen in the end here, but Parmesan does go well with spaghetti, I believe. It's a good cheese. Um, I don't know which I prefer, bezel or bracelets. Crown looks a little too small. Okay, let's chat about it for a second again. Um, Carrie, thank you so much for the super chat. These are always good fun. I want to do another one of these shows soon, maybe in a week's time or two. Um, looks like a designer had to catch a plane before finishing the pro Oh, now this watch is getting critiqued a lot. Okay, I'll just put one, one last vote up in the, in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to say PF, yes or no. <laughs> this is very, or should I actually, this watch exactly. This this piece that we're looking at now, the Parmigiani Floria Tonda PF Micro Rotor. There's so many little descriptions. <laughs> Yes or no to this piece? Would you add this? Just say price is irrelevant. Design alone, would you add this kind of watch to your collection? How's that? Micro rotor arrangement. Okay, so as far as I know, it's a new release from them. Uh, the prices are, they're talking about Ming. Yes, so that's another example. The Ming hands, I think I heard that at one stage. So let's get right into it and have a, have a quick gander at it before the show comes to a close. I just find the details fascinating. The machine engine, machine work on the dial. It's very minimalist, which it can either love it or hate it. It's it's trying to address the integrated bracelet styling, but it's different because it's not fully integrated. It has this Odysseus way of attaching its components. The typical Parmigiani way of having the lugs stepped out a little bit is something nice. Instead of going with your typical flat brushed bracelet or your polished bracelet, I'm saying bezel, flat brushed braced, ugh, flat brushed bezel. You can imagine how hard it is for me to record videos. The fluting looks very good, I think. The machining adds some quality to it, some old age quality. Um, same with the dial. It has this, I don't know, but but wavy. I'm trying to do the hard sell, people. Uh, the movement is stunning. It's a micro rotor. I mean, you can't not like it. But I find this to be a fascinating watch. I don't know why. Uh, and there was mention already in the chat about, uh, you know, it looks like the designer had to rush to get it on the plane. But the minimalism to this watch, I can admire and appreciate so it's bad. I mean, the releases here, I've had some pretty polarizing opinions on, on most of them. Like the Chapek, I'm not so much of a fan of the skeletonizing, but this watch I like, and no one likes this, and it's <laughs> love it, overpriced. Price is always relevant, Blaine says. Yeah, the Prona looks good. So so Parmigiani Fur is, is a brand I quite like. Not sure about this one, though. It looks a little bland. Probably looks better in real life. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I love how this works. Ming hands, I'm not sure, Mark says. This is cool. I think the sharpness of the hands work pretty well here when you pair it to the lugs and all of that. Um, but again, it's that restraint. It's difficult for a brand to actually say, okay, we're going to do something like this, a sports watch, fully integrated, <clears throat> but not go over the top with typeface and everything. We're going to keep it as minimal as possible. Now look at a second hand. I'm looking at it on the laptop screen. It does look kind of fashion watchy. <laughs> not what you want to say about a watch like this. Yeah, I mean, look at that movement. Now, of course, if we are to talk about the price, <clears throat> let's get into the yes and no's. The, the, the no's have it, 63%. God, that's a kick in the nuts right there. Uh, let's have a look at the at the, the numbers again. So 63 and 40, I'd imagine. And of a total of, let's see how many numbers of votes came through. 36 votes, 61 no, 38 yes. <laughs> that's fascinating. Okay, uh, looks like four different styles in one. Yeah, it's a bit of a combo. I see Random Rob joining us. Random Rob, you're a legend, so thank you so much for joining in. I love tuning into your shows, and I manage to. I always catch your videos, given the chance. Um, he's a legend. Everyone, go and follow Random Rob if you're not already. I guarantee you probably are. Everyone knows who Random Rob is. Um, look at that rotor. It looks so good. Yeah, so if we are to talk about the prices, <clears throat> I must say, there was mention, I think Mason said the chronograph is good. I can't remember, but... I find the chronograph very generic. <laughs> I think maybe I've just lost the plot. I've lost the watch plot. I find this looking so generic next to the more minimalist restrained approach on, on the left, which is hilarious. And then if we are to, and then they've got a perpetual calendar going on here. So this is like their debut of a of a sports watch, which is crazy. Um Light it on fire and move along, Carrie Floyd says. I love it. Small seconds, no date would be talking. Andreas, 
Very good shout. I like that. They haven't included any seconds on this, which is a bit of a detractor. God, that's funny. He likes the super duper certified chronometer logo. <laughs> the super duper officially certified. Yeah. <laughs> the moon phase and all that stuff. Yeah. Not for everyone, but you know what? And then we have the, I think they had a rat, they brought out a Rattrapant as well. And this is, I kid you not, 170 grand, which is insane. It's it's a lot of money. And and the, the comment on this a lot of the time was that it's it looks unfinished. I mean, I think most of us can agree here. It looks like it's just been punched out <clears throat> and and not painted with anything. Maybe it's a platinum dial. I don't know. Sandblasted. Uh, Mezzanine is checking out. It's always a pleasure having you here. Thank you for, for being a part. Everyone in the chat. I mean, you guys are legends. Such legends. We are coming to the end of the show. We have one more image. I have no idea what it is. I'm pretty sure this is the last image. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm liking this more. I look at it, but the price doesn't feel right. The price, is, trust me, it's gonna. When we get to it, you'll see it's it's not not that digestible. Hans is leaving us as well. Off to Bedfordshire, like right now. Oh, got it. Bedfordshire, got it. Okay, I'm. I was in. I lived in Bedfordshire for a while. So you're going to. He's going to bed. Everyone, Bedfordshire, get it. Okay, good. Glad we clear that up. Yeah, this dial looks incomplete, but the good thing is it's a Rattrapunt and it has a, a pulsation dial, so that's something. Like the recessed elements to the subdials, that's cool, but mm, not easy to read. But look at that movement. I mean, stand out, amazing movement. We were chatting about how I don't appreciate how some are assembled, and I love how the bridges have been done. This has to get one of the best recommendations. Again, you're paying the price of a house for this movement, but then again, it looks pretty good, don't you think? Coffee again. No hands or indices. Simplify. <laughs> yeah, just take it all off. Just take the hands and the batons off completely. Just leave it blank. Yeah, 170. Yeah, I know. To so check your pulse. <laughs> Andreas says, so at 117, you have to check your pulse. Yeah, it's 170 as far as I know. Have a look. Not that digestible. Yeah, yeah. Gastronomy, ladies and gents. So beautiful looking movement. I mean, we get right into those details. It's a double column wheel because it's a Rattrapunt. Notice it's on different levels, so it's maybe not too in your face. Beautiful movement. Lovely finishing. Uh, looks rock solid. As mentioned, yeah, I mean, the balance bridge, Rick, you're right. I mean, look how well assembled it is. It's all, I, I must say, I'm such a sucker for how these bridges are, are just, it feels like an engine, an actual car engine, how parts are just being taken out put back in like a roll cage you know everything's being assembled on top of itself and it feels manufactured but also designed at the same time and there's so much attention to detail i mean every edge has been polished and chamfered and brushed Eesh, yeah the movement is great but then we look to the price let's um swallow our tongues a little bit and have a look at that this is going to be the time when your eyes start watering oh 100 meter water resistance good to know you can actually get in the water with this thing how crazy is that so 171 USD for the Rattrapunt. Yeah. 22, I think 22 for the standard. And this is when it starts losing its traction, when the prices are pretty hectic. Um, yeah. All things considered, stunning example. What's the thickness carry asks? Uh, 950 platinum case. I think that's to do with a... Uh, see again... These descriptions, we have to read through the whole this, the whole write-up of this watch to get an accurate description, so I'm not going to do that, but uh, not that thick. I th I feel like it's under, maybe it's at about 10 or under 10. Yeah, something I like about this, though. I, I really like that minimalism. Definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, no, I simplify. Don't get it. Uh, hit without the S. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, I missed that one completely. 73 math, thank you so much. I'm sure you're probably also logging off. Oh, it's 15, really, Carrie, 15 mils. That's for the Retropunt. Makes sense. I mean, that's almost like two calibers on top of each other for the complication, but yeah. <laughs> in case in case you drive into the ocean with your your your, bet, your better Jaeger, I've never heard of that car before, Andreas. Maybe I am just too plastered. There's one more watch, I think. What did I feature here at the end? I have no idea. 21 of 22. No, that's it. This is the, this is the last one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've had a good time. Um, ladies and gents, closing thoughts on a watch. If you'd like a question to be answered before we log off, that would be good fun. Uh, we've, we've been running now for almost three hours. It's one of the shortest live streams in human history on this end. So, yeah, we can, we can try and Bentley SUV. Oh, is that what they call it now? 
I didn't even know that, Andreas. Thank you. Date window distracts. It sure does. If you'd like to ask a question about next watches or a comparison of something you're looking for, I can maybe do one more question for logging off because it is, it's coming up to one in the morning, this side of the world and everyone else. Don't know where you are, but yeah, it's probably pretty late. This is fun. I mean, <laughs> so Blaine says 170K, 25 pieces, more attainable than a Rolex Professionals. <laughs> it's a bargain. It's a bargain, Blaine. You're right. Uh, okay. Date window distracts. So if there aren't any more questions, we can wrap up the show, but it has been good banter does it come with a watch to tell the time you know i would hope so i would hope so i mean that's the downside you're paying this much and it's so difficult to read but it is kind of beautiful in its own way but it's parmigiani and i mean you can find parmigiani for such good prices today as well looks like a six cylinder engine <laughs> yeah i love it i absolutely love it um so this was a was a good discussion around i mean watch reports always fun it's always just whatever we just chat around whatever the subject is that movement looks awesome uh favorite movements for me Lunga, gronefeld and parmigiani perhaps you should do a video on aesthetics of movements Eesh, that would be fun that would be good fun i like that idea a lot mason um so i think i will wrap it up before the three hour mark just for has it no hold on uh 10 11 12 yeah coming up to three hours <laughs> i can't believe we we're actually keeping it short and sweet for a change uh stop the screen share how do i do that there we go um ladies and gentlemen this has been good fun these shows are I, I like the fact that they are more impromptu they take less prep work which is good fun and i think in future i'd like to do a few more on more subject related themes which would be fun there's one that's been gnawing at me quite a lot. It was actually mentioned on the Bobby Legs stream a couple of weeks back. And I've put put it down on a list. And I'm thinking it would be such a good way for an, us to engage talking about watch brands um, and just going all over the place with regards to brands that we really like. And it'll be good fun. But anyway, until then, uh, everyone have a superb weekend. That's Sunday now, this, <laughs> this side of the world. Um, and yeah, as, as far as just collectively wrapping up this Geneva Watch Day show, again, I'll, I'll reemphasize and say, I think I, I love the idea that the show is condensed enough that you can, you can appreciate a lot more of the watches individually. When you have a show like Basel World and there's 500 watches being launched, a lot get missed. So having these, these separate little gatherings means that you get to celebrate and enjoy these things in a lot more detail. And you're getting more attention to these brands that often are overlooked. And some are definitely arriving in the limelight, like Chapek, Moser, and many more. So, yeah, good fun. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, Eric and Mark, pleasure. Blue shirts, it's always a pleasure having you here. So really hope you're resting up. I know New York is getting hit pretty heavily by the storm going on there at the moment. Um, and the rest of you in the world, thank you so much for continually supporting me, the channel. Um, I really hope you're all doing well. We're now in the third quarter of the year already, which blows my freaking mind. Um, the last of the summer in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's yeah, not the best thing, but you know what? This year has flown by and <laughs> Russell's just joined in. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying your weekend, Russell. Uh, awesome show. I'd love that concourse, the elegance. I'm going to get that completely wrong. Looked amazing. Um, take care of yourself, everyone. We're going to catch up soon. I think we'll have another show in a week's time, maybe two. Uh, to the rest of you, yeah, once again, I'm going to be talking in circles. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have an awesome week upcoming. Keep enjoying your watches and take some time. I've really been enjoying the idea of taking time to, to look at my pieces more and, and consider them more. Think about them in the collection and what still makes them speak to you. I think it's, I think it's special. Okay, everyone, look after yourselves. Take care. See you in the next one. Cheers for now.